No, we're just getting level. Right. <laughs> we could do that. Keep this in. Are you recording this? Oh, good. Right. He's recording this. Oh, look at the fire. What's the fire all about, Stu? Well, the fire um, motif, way. the idea was it was trying to make it feel more dignified and operatic than the average oh, Western Are you going to be serious? About this? It's not an interview. The Cambridge Theatre, so London. I've heard you say that thing about the fire thing. With the that's your character. name. That's my name. He's a crazy Thomas. I'm being demoted into flame. Yeah, book is a strange music theatre term. Yeah. There isn't really a book, because all it was all sunk. There's John Thory. Oh, John Thory. He's obsessed with stairs. Any stairs that you see in this, he insisted on them being in it. John, theatre That's me. Yeah. I never directed anything before. I nearly won yeah. an Olivier Award. Theatre director now. I know. Oh, look at that. There we are. Oh, has it started now? Yeah. Oh, look, they've turned the reds. It's interesting, actually, because when we, at the National Theatre, like, this would create a real sense of expectation and people would concentrate. And when we moved it into the West End, you get mainly kind of losers and squares in the audience that would go and see oh, the Ben Hill musical. Been banging on about that. And they'd be eating sandwiches and passing, like, picnic baskets around and going, oh, is it starting? And I used to make them do this quieter and quieter every night to try I know. and get their attention. I know. drove me mad. I couldn't hear. I know. Well, that's because there were people who weren't listening. Well, that's the acoustic thing. With the acoustic vibe. Anyway, the costumes. You should never. I can I just say in the future, like for the next when you when you direct um, Chicago Bunny, the uh, the new um, musical I'm writing about um, Bunny and the Hat. Right. You should never tell people in the West End to sing quietly, right? Ever, because they will. What happens? What happens if you tell people to sing quietly? Is they don't turn up. Yeah, but the problem was. They don't was turn up, the, Stuart. Is that what you want? The West End audience won't. Do you want to know? Uh, you know, that's The what West happened. End audience aren't used to having to concentrate on a piece of music. Did you there. know, by the way, um, uh, these are all holograms? No, they weren't. They I'm are. I'm telling you. Every one of those standing there is a hologram, hologramic, hologramic representation oh, of me. A bunch of people that we work with for months. They're very good. Co Leah Archer's costumes here, if I'll just point out, are marvellous. Because there was a, when you leave people to their own devices to do a Jerry Springer audience, they tend to get a load of people dressed like prostitutes or in baseball caps. And um, she worked really hard with the with the with the cast to sort of Thank you, get a, um, a, a, a you know a credible. Thank look. you for the costumes. <laughs> Thank you, Leah. They're all in a warehouse now, of course. Thank rocking. you, Leah. They look really good here. <laughs> Richard Thomas always finds a rhyme. It's my, it is my craft. What, it is um, my mission. So this is the, this is the overtly true at the okay, top. What just, kind of music? What were you hearing in your head here when you wrote this? Oh, what were your influences Christ, in this area? Serious question. Now. Okay. Well, very obviously, right. There's an element of requiem to it. Uh, you know, hints of. I mean, it's basically kind of Mozart requiem, very um, dignified. It's kind of a, aspects of a curia liaison. Do you like it when they lift their arm up there? I really do like it when they I lift their arm. From uh, the Nuremberg rally. <laughs> I thought it was good. It's the wrong way, Stuart. You got it the wrong way. Hey, you'd have been a terrible Nazi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you did. You're supposed to turn the hand. Oh, no. no. Now, it's great. Do you want that bit in the bit where I called you a bad Nazi? Do you want that cut out? I don't want you to like take that as a. What I like, what I like the atmosphere here. The, the clapping. Look at the clapping. I know, but, but again, there was this panic in the audience of like people going, "Oh, let's go and see Jerry Springer." At me, a laugh. Where's and then the they panic? Get there. They're because clapping. they're going. I know, but they're going. But the clapping. Where's the panic? In well, that? no. Before it, you can feel the audience going, "Oh God, it really is classical music." Oh no, we're going to hate this. Uh, yeah. Fuck you. Hey, big laugh. It's all yeah. swearing. They like it. Yeah. When does it start? She's very good, isn't she? Yeah. Well, actually, you know, it's quite good. I might turn it up. <laughs> I haven't actually been listening to it. Yeah, let's have it a bit, have it a bit louder in your well, Turn it up using your microphone now. Look, that thing, that thing on the right. Look, I'm going to do it. Oh, yeah. Is that louder? Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, there's Ellen. She's Welsh, Ellen Monway. She studied at Aberystwyth University. And she can speak fluent Welsh. Yeah. And you can, can't you? I can understand more, a lot more than I can speak, a lot more. Well, I'm sure the people that bought the DVD and are hoping for insights into yeah. production are fascinated to learn that you can speak fluent Welsh. Yeah, well, you know what's due? They probably are. Yeah. <laughs> Hooray! Let's start properly now. Yeah. You can see um, Julian Kraut's set design here. Julian Cratch did a brilliant design. It made it really easy to direct, actually, because all the choices are made for you. There's the iconic uh, chairs there. How many chairs are there, Stu? Four. 
for. This is uh, David Bedella, who you can color? currently see in Holby City. What Very colour plain. are the chairs? Green. Jonathan Weiris was, a, uh, I think, a 15th century uh, devil worshipper. That's where I chose that name from. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Do you know, I, I could safely say no, no, just oh, no. three I've years. I never noticed that. Yeah. Look at the wonderful interplay between singer and chorus. Yeah. Do you know the writing that takes? Do you know? Do you know the work that takes? Do you know how tight that is? Every single person in that ensemble, right, all those people you can see left and right, Rob Thurtle, our assistant director, worked out with all of them a name for their character, a backstory, uh, why they'd gone to the show. So they all had um, a whole load of, that whole life worked out, which kind of helped them to work out how they were going to react from moment to moment all the way through it. It's brilliant. That woman there, right, three along from the left, Nicole, oh, she's gone now. She's a Cree Indian. Partly, anyway. Do you want to hear me drinking some water? David Videla was in um, uh, this film, Alexander, as well, remember? This bit song is called Jerry Jerry. Do you know why yeah. I called it Jerry Jerry? No. Because the lyrics in it are Jerry Jerry, and it seems to sort of, in a way, be uh, representative of the two syllabic grunt. What do you think of that when you see all the audience joining in? Do you like that? I don't dislike it. I, I kind of, I mean, I, I think I think you had to get it out of the way because everyone thought it was going to be that kind of show. I think show. you just grew to hate it. I think you grew to hate a lot of things. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of hatred in you now, Stuart. You started this whole project three years ago. Longer so than that, 2001 it was. Because it 2001? Yeah. What happened in 2001? We did it at Battersea Arts Centre in the summer. Are you sure it was 2001? Yeah. Wasn't it 2002? No, 2002 was Edinburgh. Is it non-negotiable history? Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> I'm rewriting. Fate is fixed. Oh, great. Look, we got a coffee coming in here. Yeah. Coffee coming right. in. Just no, it can come in. It can come in. It's all right. It can come in. Yeah, it can come in. <laughs> the show hasn't really started yet. <laughs> yeah, the beginning's long, isn't it? it goes on. Oh, a bit. great. What um, have you got? Um, what about food? Oh, lovely. Yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself? Oh, this is Adrian. Who's on sound? Say hello, Adrian. Hi there. In the mic. Uh, in the mic. Okay, go on then. <laughs> oh yeah, lovely. Thanks. Look at that brilliant dancing. Uh, I like that. Because you don't really like if, if the truth is. To be, there we go. Oh, thanks a lot. I never liked dancing mm -hmm. until I worked on this show, and I came to. Yeah, you were very reluctant. Though to be honest, you really did hate dancing, didn't you? Yeah. I think well, one of the f few kind of well, when I say few, I mean many <laughs> arguments. When I say arguments, I don't mean arguments. Sort of yeah. minor, brusque fallouts was that you didn't. Um, you didn't like movement in general. I don't really like move people moving around, no. Yeah, but then, yeah. but, but then something like that, a lady in a pink tracksuit dancing oh around, that, make, that makes me so happy. Oh, That's Ruby King there. And we've got to also pay tribute to Jenny. Jenny, our choreographer, taught me to love the world yeah. of movement. Do you want to close, taught me do you want to close that door? To love the world of movement. That's a lot. Oh, the losers. La 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 losers. Quite I, like, I just like the colour. Partly why I like that pink tracksuit. When I was on acid once, and I've only done it twice, the first time, I saw um, what are we, which tracksuit? That oh, pink yeah, tracksuit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw an advert for Mr Bonnie's ice cream, which is an, a Scottish ice cream company, and it had yeah. this pink writing, and I just fell on the floor laughing. And whenever I see that yeah. pink. I still get a real air of, of um, LSD-induced happiness. When I last took acid, I ended up in the <laughs> right, freezer. Right, musical, didn't you? <laughs> no, in, the, uh, in the freezer compartment of my Paulette Room flat, screaming, howling with despair, thinking I was going to be mad forever. Really? And then it, then it, then it passed. It was great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to look like? Um... The funny thing was, you know, I, I would say this to people as well. Obviously, we don't condone drugs in any way unless they really work for you well yeah, at any point. As long as they don't destroy well. your life, which obviously they most of them. Uh, well, yeah. what, what I'm going to say is. Oh, I had a point then, I've lost it. Were you? In my apology. Was it about movement? 
No, it wasn't about movement. Oh, no, what it was is this, right, is if you find yourself howling with despair in an acid frenzy, you might think that actually you're going to be irritating your neighbours. Yeah. But on the day after this happened, I went down and I really apologised profusely to my neighbours. I said, look, you, you, know, you may have heard the howling of the uh, wailing of the damned, but that was me. Right. And they said, I didn't hear anything. Right. So in a way, I thought, well, that's nice to know. Yeah, Those just small the consolations. Of the, city, the loneliness of the city. Yeah. And I think that uh, I think that despair and loneliness has fed into your work, hasn't it? I mean, what is this if not a plaintive cry of how of anguish? This whole thing. Well, the old show. Yeah, including the tap dancing. <laughs> Even the dancing is anguished. <laughs> What's yeah, anguished about it's the David Soul. Brilliant. He's uh, fantastic, isn't he? It was abs David Soul is the only famous actor I've ever worked with whose stories about his life are actually interesting. Because normally their anecdotes involve Laurence Olivier and swearing. And his are all about when he was a kind of folk singer in the 60s and he's, got, he's, saying, he's telling you a story and it begins, so it's 1965, I'm opening for the birds. And you're going, wow, that's interesting. Yeah. He was marvellous. He, he, um, he, is he brought so much to this part. Diamond, diamond, diamond he's, geezer. He's fantastic man. 24 carat. Thank you. I think he sort of understood a lot about what it would be like to be um, a star like the real Jerry Springer that's gone a bit wrong, <gasps> you know, because he sort of, um, he, he understands that high level of celebrity having had it when he was in Starsky and Hutch. And so he kind of, he really uh, related to that. This is Ben, the wonderful Benjamin Benjamin. He, he came into audition for us and um, for the ensemble and we loved him. And we wanted to find out if he'd, uh, if he'd do a, a lead part, so I ran out. Now, I get the story is right. Yeah. The story is, and it's true. When I say story, and normally when people say story, they mean lie. Yeah. This story is true. He came in, he auditioned for um, chorus, and we ran out, and we said to him, you know, uh, can you come back? Wait a second. And he said, oh, don't worry, lads, I know what you're going to say. I'm a bit too, too, bit too much of a big lad for yeah, the role. Can't use but we said, no, come back, please. An audition for us. And he turned up as in, our main role in Crocodile Shoes, didn't he? Crocodile yeah. Shoes. He's fantastic, and he was working. He'd just come off singing on cruise ships and things, and he was working in um, cruise ship. the underwear department at Marks and Spencers. Yeah. But he is obsessed with underwear. You know that. Is he? Yeah, he's, he's got a massive collection of it. He's probably quite knowledgeable. <laughs> he knows all about it. He's brilliant, and he, um, yeah, he, he, he's, he was so great all the way through this. He met, he, yeah. How's your coffee, by the way? It's very nice. We ended up writing the part of God for him. Uh, God wasn't originally Don't a part of the show. Tell them the plot hasn't happened yet. Well, I'm assuming that they've watched this already rather you've than watching it away. for the first time with you've the director's just commentary. Given away the, you might, you've just given away the whole plot. Carrie Ellis was the this actress's name. She was fantastic. This part, which originally wrote for uh, Laurie Lixenberg, who did all the opera with him early on. Done and uh, She's Carrie years. took it over. This, in fact, is this the second cast of the Jerry Spring show, and it's obviously the first. You can imagine how happy the first cast who left were when they realised it was going to get televised. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> you take your choice, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Make your choices. <laughs> ben was in it all the way through, though. Yeah. Oh, lovely. Listen to that voice. Oh, it's nice. I love this bit. Yeah, I like this bit. You wrote it. Arrogant man. <laughs> <laughs> See that guy on the far left, Jason, there in the green jumper? He yeah. was in the 1980s Brechtian style indie rock band, the Band of Holy Joy. Really? Yeah. Who I once saw at the Jericho Tavern in Oxford. Oh, that's interesting. This is what people want. It's DVD commentary gold dust. So, what would you like to say to Dwight? It's quite good for this. Sorry, I've kept, we're supposed to keep talking, aren't no, we? No, it doesn't matter. No, it's OK. You can be... It's nice, you know. You, can, you don't have to, like, yadder on all the time. Yadda, yadda. You know David Soul, right? Do you know this? Room for silence in you know, speech. in the 60s, he used to do an act in Greenwich Village in New York. And he was called The Covered Man. And he used to wear, he used to sing folk songs with a ski mask on. And no one knew who he was. <laughs> wow, that's funny. And he made a single. And he was backed by the band that I think they became Dylan's band on um, Highway 61 Revisited. And you can't find it anywhere. I've been all over the internet trying to get it. It was a song 
at the being the covered. I'm looking mouth. at this. <laughs> look at this lunch menu. It's called squat. Something. This lunch menu is called squat and gobble. Yeah, well, is that a pub? I suppose it is. It's a command. This is that is a pub? Yeah, I suppose so. What is it? You just a what? A cafe called the Squat and Gobble Daily Specials. Oh, this is a nice little song. Yeah, it's great. This is Claire Platt. Yeah. She's um, she got bumped up from the ensemble to this part, and she was very good at it. I'm not sure whether they get the beef lasagna or the brie and red onion quiche with mixed leaf salad. Oh, hang on, turn over. Jibatas. Get your usual jacket potatoes. That was egg mayo. I'm, no, I'm I've never had. Are you gonna, what are you going to have? Well, I don't know. Because right, since I got right diverticulitis. Second, roast, there's roasted vegetables. Crispy bacon. I don't think that's good for your di... What is it called? Di diverticulitis, yeah. Yeah. You call since it... I started you know working, what? You yeah. call it diverticulitis. I call it attention-seeking. Since I started working on this show, I've got my stomach's packed in. I've got tinnitus. Yeah. You were tinnitus, I've, to be fair. <laughs> you did have tinnitus before. No, I didn't. I, did. I remember when it came on. It came on during auditions at the National Theatre. And it's. I'll tell you when I first got it. It was exactly this bit here when I was directing this at Battersea Arts Centre. Yeah. And I used to stand between Laurie Lixenberg and Valder. You, you don't think acting, that. And there were opera singers, your got, bloody singers, shouting just, yeah, right, calm into down, my ears. Calm, calm. I've just got a question for you. Do, do you think the tinnitus you have on yeah. a daily basis it was caused by is at all related to. 35 years of very, very loud rock gigs. You've, no, because... You've, appear, you've um, attended nearly nightly, often three in one night. No, because it's very, very high proven. volumes that the opera gives you tinnitus. Yeah. Really? Particularly your work. <laughs> Is that right? Look at the, pe the piercing tones that you use. It's Sounds quite nice, quite delicate on the ear. I'm it, enjoying it very well, much. It can be, but when you're standing right next to them... No. Why would you cheat? You know, on what have we got to show for it? We haven't made anything out of it. We can't. Car easy it. enough. Jacket potatoes with roasted vegetables, crispy oh, bacon, chicken, oh, ham and yeah. eat, ham and cheese. No yeah. egg mayo, possible. That'd be all right. Or a tuna. Wait, there's loot. Don't. Get... There's an egg mayo, which is possible. Tuna mayo. Can you do tuna? Uh, yeah. Okay, possibly tuna, chicken, prawn. You want prawn? I used to be able to eat anything before I started working on this show. Now, Veggie but... chili, chili con con. No, you can't Stomach's do that. Stomach's rotted. I'm deaf. How about a tuna mayo? Tuna's good for the brain. The I'll get... Is that a yes? Yeah. Tuna so one tuna mayo... Oh, we're at it. We... I, oh. Tuna mayonnaise, jacket potato, Jacket please. potato. Did you want any um, butter in it, are you? No. Are you going to eschew the butter? Look, I think we should talk more about this. I think you should make your order and then... I am, I'm trying and I, I, if you didn't interrupt, I'm trying. So get a salad. I would like the... Um, Grilled chicken salad, but you can. Do you know what? You bring it in about 40 minutes or so when the first stuff's done. Is that right? Yeah, great, brilliant. Oh, I like this song. It's one of my favourite songs. Yeah, it's great. It's, 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 it's really and moving. And that's what it's people don't. Like. Wait, wait. Oh, lovely. Lovely. This is what drives me up the wall about this whole thing. What? Well, if people going, you know. When people are saying oh, it's offensive, it's not to do with it's, the language itself is not offensive. It's offensive. All those sixty thousand people that complained. Well, I mean, well, that... well, rewind. Hey. What sixty thousand <laughs> people? Rewind. <laughs> what what's been going on? <laughs> what I'm saying is that that song. That's a beautiful song about hopes and desires, which happens to include an image of urinating on someone. Yeah. Now, what do you think about these Valkyries with, in hindsight? Um, in hindsight, I think they served the narrative well. I feel that... Uh, OK, uh, to speak seriously about music theatre or music drama, which yeah. uh, or, or opera calls, whatever you call it, the hardest thing is how to advance plot in a non-clunky enough way. That's yeah. a very, very hard thing. And um, usually musicals will err uh, on too much explanation and too many kind of a narrative... Um, too much exposition, obvious yeah. exposition. And I think we probably erred slightly in the other direction by having... No exposition. Having no exposition. But or, or very, no very quick. Person. Very just uh, quick. But I'd rather that. I think it's much better to yeah. err on the side of absolute economy when it comes to and what happens next. So, for example, this, this, the that, um, Valkyrie introduces a notion that there's obviously something else going on. There's yeah. a bit of a heavier subtext or whatever. No and that there will be... But what we've done that... That keeps it, it would be better than doing a scene where he sings on the phone to his agent, oh my god, oh my god, I'm feeling very worried about yeah. things, I feel a bit, you know, that, that, you know, guilty about this or that, oh, blah, blah, blah. So, um, my feelings towards Valkyrie is... The more people wanted us to get rid of them, the more I felt bloody-mindedly that we should hang on to them. 
you know I think they did a, I think they did a good job narrative wise it's sort of you had to we had to yeah that was the thing is I mean there's if not of trying to keep it moving without having those clanking scenes that you have in, in music theater normally I, I think just said that yeah that's what you just said yeah this I'm joking, you can repeat it. Yeah. His this is Ryan Malloy. He used to be in the ensemble again and he moved yeah. up into the lead part. He's very He's good. Fabulous. He's undirectable though, I mean he just is who he is. He ended up singing for Frankie Goes to Hollywood, you know. Yeah, at no, Wembley. Yeah. He's got yeah. His... Quite cute as well. Yeah, it? I mean for me as a heterosexual man, I had to For me as a gay man looking at him as a woman, <laughs> I'm actually really, uh, I find that quite attractive. Yeah, well, so do I. I do, I'm being quite serious. That's the thing, I mean, I think, not only did I learn to love music working on this show, but I learned to love the idea of having sex with men dressed as women. <laughs> <laughs> and I went deaf, and my stomach broke. I can, I'm a very can, different I don't person. think you can blame the stomach on just being the opera. Again, I can. With, uh, because this is it a question. made me drink heavily. This is a question. In the... The stress of it made me drink heavily. Would the nine pints nightly and kebab... You didn't listen, let's be honest. You, before two... Th before... About three months ago, you didn't have the greatest diet in the world, did you? No. You're let's right. be honest. Do you think that had any impact? On yeah, your I did, did definitely. Guffalitis, yeah. or whatever it's yeah. called. Guffalitis. <laughs> hey, this is the only line I wrote in the first half. <laughs> Actually, good. my contribution to that scene. Can I just say publicly, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> there were great lines in this. There were certain lines where you knew there were, like, total laughs. Even on a very slow, quiet night, you still get a big laugh. That was one of them. What the fuck, what the fuck, what the fuck, if I fuck it was, was a big one. Um, always got a good laugh on the old clue that's clam when they started tapping. Actually, I'm a bit gay in the second half, he's got to laugh. Yeah. Fuck you, big laugh. Talk to the stigmata, big laugh. Actually, there's laugh. You know what? There's a, there's lot, a lot of laughs, of laughs in this it. show. Yeah. And you know what? They weren't used Who to wrote that. this? They weren't used to that in the world of music theatre. Yeah. So, Tremont, let me get this Well, you've got guys and dolls, I have to say. Yeah, guys and dolls are one of the great ones, you know. Can we just. I should explain it to you who hates all music theatre. Even though he hasn't listened to much. No, I haven't listened to much. If he was honest. I hate it from a position of You hate it from what ignorance. position? Yeah, from a position of ignorance. This did you, used to, you didn't really used to like jazz, did you? You used to hate that. I did till I was about 23, and now it's my favourite kind of music. I remember I heard um, you weren't a big fan a of Sonny Rollins either, track on that. No, I like that now. You know, I mean, William Blake your said... hatred always do to love after a while? Eventually, William Blake said, expect poison from standing water, and I believe you should keep on... You know, basically, yeah, but lots of lots of things I never. I never liked jazz. Now I do like it. I never liked folk music. Now I do like it. Yeah. I never liked music theatre. You know what? I still why don't it, like um, it at all. I think it's rubbish. Why is it? <laughs> where's the poison water in Tamla? I'm not asking you to drink. I'm not asking you to drink water with, you know, mosquito malaria. No, no. It. Well, I wouldn't do that. Well, Look at this bit. It's great when he says he loves him. They look really real. Those tits, don't they? I mean, they really do look real. I mean, if you. I have to say, You'd it's be like... happy with those, wouldn't you? I wouldn't want them myself. Do you want... I wouldn't want them you're not attached to anything. You're on your way there, Greedy. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that's so cheap. I love you. Oh. It's horrible when he pushes him away. Yeah, I know, it's horrible. Look at this, watch. You. Oh, God. You know... It's, 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 it's so sad. Oh, that's great. Face. Brilliant. Can I say, Pete Orton, who directed uh, this telly. telly thing, uh, uh, is, in, is watching now. Hello, oh, Pete. Really, really waving him. Wave, we're waving at Pete. Yeah, so it's well. really good. It looks really good. Yeah. It's, almost like he, it's almost like he'd watched, seen it before. <laughs> before he filmed it. Yeah. <laughs> ah, good tune. Dun, nah, nah. What's great about this first scene, I think, is that it does... Everything that people thought Joey Springer the opera was going to be, you get it out of the way in this yeah, first know, yeah. scene. And, um, yeah, I know. That's why I write it. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good old Steve. That's a good laugh. Steve, now Steve's played by um, Guy Porritt, who was a... Uh, 
He'd not done much acting before, he was a rugby player. Yeah. And he was fantastic, he stayed with the production for years. He told he... me he stopped playing rugby because he didn't like the violence. Really? Yeah. And I remember I told, my, I told it to my um, uh, uncle, the Welsh player, who's a Welsh man who plays rugby, and he laughed and said, the only reason to play rugby is because of the violence. Well, that's ironic that he left rugby because of the violence and ended up being in choreographed fights nightly. But stopping them, of course. Yeah. So the, there's not that much irony there, is there? He was, he was a good there's Somebody against violence. Yeah. Uh, that's a good bit. Yeah. Oh, listen to that diction. Oh, I love it. It's great, isn't it? Well, you write, you write things that are singable. I love good diction. You, you love it. You love old good school. Diction. If you see, if you listen, you listen to Sinatra, you listen to Dean Martin, you listen to um, Sammy Davis Jr. particularly as well. The diction of those crooners is just wonderful. It's a joy, a joy to listen to. And there's this whole thing in opera that you, you, that you know, you can't understand what they say. It's because it's bad diction. It's lazy, poor diction. Paul. But it is. I, so I used to write. Oh, should I say this? this yeah, go on. Okay, well, I used to do loads of comedy gigs with you as well, remember? Hello, yeah. Do you remember? And um, because I used to take my Laurie out to sing um, sort of uh, little heckle lines and songs, and in a comedy uh, venue, if you can't understand the words, you will be booed off yeah. and you won't get paid and you'll feel terrible about yourself yeah. and self loathing will accelerate and there'll be a, you know, that might bring on. You know, you're, you're cancer or something. Of, um, so uh, the diction, getting good diction meant laughs, uh, an increasing sense of self-esteem, self-worth. Your experience of being a performer <laughs> on the front line has brought a lot to this production. I should imagine, uh, you with your comedy background, that you're probably the yeah. only person who's written a West End uh, musical uh, who has had a naked man thrown at them by a prostitute. Uh, that's true, yeah, that's my first gig in the uh, Café Royale, all those yeah. years ago. <laughs> and John, the producer, was managing me, managing me, and still, well, still is. Yeah. I always remember him before we went to this boxing ring to do this gig. Of in a fun, boxing uh, ring, yeah, a, a stag night in a boxing yeah, ring. Yeah, you were doing your musical comedy act. Yeah. And I always remember him saying, "Just stick to the act. Don't worry. Just stick to the act." Yeah. And, and what happened? We died on our asses so yeah. badly. Bottles were thrown, and then these um, prostitutes stripped this naked man. They threw this naked man at us. Oh, you see that image of the Cern yeah. giant going up there, right? One yeah. day I was in the National Theatre and I was on my own in the graphics department and I was trying to use a computer program to elongate the penis of that of that um, Cern Abbas giant figure which is from a hillside in Dorset yeah. and a guy came in and I was sitting there making the penis of this hill figure longer on the computer graphics and this guy looked at me and I went oh it's alright, I'm the director of Joe Spring of the Opera <laughs> I didn't know. That's funny. That's know, nice. Yeah. I really had a, I had a lot of good fun at the National where I felt like that I was often in situations asking people to do quite bizarre things uh, that they probably yeah. never had to, to do there before. So they were so about, supportive. Talk about Leon. Leon. Well, Leon was great, wasn't he? He, yeah. did, he took over this part from Wills Morgan, who'd very much made it his own. Uh, he, and Wills had been with the show right from the start and had done lots of stuff with Rich. And um, it was kind of a bit intimidating for him, I think, because of the extent to which Wills had done it. But he found a whole new way of doing it. And he's only, was he 23? Four, four years old, he is. He's four years old, yeah. and this is his first major role since college? That's the thing he's done since he was born. He's only, no, it is his first major role since college. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's great. We I love Leon. And Annabelle, there was another person who came through from the ensemble into the cast. She was fantastic as well. She got better and better all the way through. This scene with them two doing it is such a lot of love in it. It's so delightful. Tell me, baby, tell me, baby, tell me, baby, tell me, baby, tell me. I wanna. It's quite good, this actually, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, the show. It's good. I mean, you, know, you sometimes it, forget. You forget. You yeah. forget when you've heard it like 300 times that yeah. actually it can be. It a, you know, when I was on the, I was on the radio can... in January uh, answering. What, standing on a radio? No, I was on this program and this woman, the woman was going, How dare you have Jesus in a nappy? And I was yeah. going, He's not in a nappy. And she's going, He's in a nappy. How dare you have him in a nappy? It's and a I went, He's not in a nappy. A and she went, He is. And I said, Look, I've co wrote the, this, I've directed it. I was involved in every single level for design decisions, and I've seen it 400 times. So don't tell me that he's in a nappy. Why didn't you say it was a loincloth? 
I mean, it, it's, a, it's like what he wears. Be Look, his stats are nappy. Yeah, but and he's, when Jesus comes on in the second half, you'll see Pete he's just, not wearing. Pete just mouthed that in fact a nappy is a loincloth. That's a nappy. Yeah, but he's, he's talking. Stu's banging on the. Se- <laughs> it's a brave man that can do that dance wearing only a nappy. He's also, you know what, he. Um, the way he did that sort of growling, that's which was um, uh, is really good. Yeah. I really grew to yeah. like that. He sort of added all that. Normally, so I don't like it when singers sort of take stuff like that and start eliminating notes. Yeah. But I really like the way he does that. Yeah. Well, Leon is a fan. I wonder what they're all doing now. Working in shops, I expect. <laughs> <laughs> what what happened to them? I miss them. They were all right, weren't they? What are we doing now? Oh, I don't know. We're doing this. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Actually, Leon's become um, an airline pilot. <laughs> Has he? No. <laughs> I believed you then. <laughs> that's quite good. It would help in the bed department. She's become a bed lion tamer, Annabelle, as far as I understand. Good. Yeah. That's nice. Are you saying I'm bad in bed? No, baby. It's quite good when you when you direct a big bunch of people, you know. Yeah. You work with them every night, you go to the pub afterwards. It's like having a load of friends. Yeah. Then it stops and they never ring. Do you ring them? No, it would be right, undignified, so I think. It's a two-way, two-way street. Yeah, it's a two-way street. <laughs> no. She looks great as that Valkyrie, doesn't she? Yeah. What happened to that Valkyrie costume? I wouldn't mind going out in that for a while. Oh, I've got it. I dress up in it sometimes. You bitch. I dress up in it and I go around. I pretend to be... Um, in the show. A, a, I pretend to be a Norse goddess in my house. That's good. It looks it's quite own. a good... Um, on your it's own. a good look for me. It's a good look for me. This is, not, this is a nice little song, actually. Yes, he did this very well. Rich Herring was used to say, and he, he said this kind of was the pivotal point of the show for him, whereby he felt this embodied the whole thing of non-judgment. You know, he said, "Here's a guy. His thing is that he likes to shit in his pants. What difference does it make? None at all. Who cares? Let him let him do what they want." He did it very well um, as well to sing it without. He doesn't. Ham it up. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't ham it up. And he doesn't give any impression that he thinks it's funny. It's beautiful. It's just sincere, it's just sincere. And that was the key to the whole thing, was to sing everything in a sincere way rather than the kitsch way or a camp way or with any knowing irony or whatever. Camp can be very sincere. Can be, but it rarely is. What have you got against theater. camp? Nothing. What have you got against music theatre? Everything. <laughs> there was a good audience that night that for the, that came in when it was recorded. Hey, go for it, son. It's funny that this is one of the longest numbers in the show, and, um, and also there's no about half of it has no words. It's kind of uncharacteristic well, of, it's, of you. It's scatting as well. Yeah, scatting, which is a, a pun, is it? It is indeed a yeah. pun. Did, so did, did, did scatting in jazz have anything to do with scatology? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't think so. What, is they, have they got roots, linguistic roots, know. in the same idea? I don't know what it is. Scatting. Maybe Adrian knows. Do you know Adrian Simon? No, he's Richard's shaking his asking head. the sound engineer if he knows the roots of the medical we're definition of being obsessed with excrement. No, we were asking him if he knows the uh, <laughs> the etymology of scatting in jazz applied to jazz. Perhaps someone could go and find that out. Uh, Good bit of growl in there. I like that. I think he sold it. That is a sort of... That's great. It's, Leon's great. I'm a bit of Leon's fan. What's the big secret? I had to get my diaper. How many times do you think you watch the show? Three, about probably 350 times. But you know, seeing it, I haven't had to think about it for six months and I'm really enjoying watching this. I'm so proud to have been involved in it. Look at that set, it's, when you see it lit like that. Julian did a brilliant, brilliant thing where oh, look, it feels a, like a okay. TV set, but it's also got something of a high Anglican cathedral about it. I remember You're writing this say. on a Sunday morning. I had, yeah. a, I had a big row at home. Right. Hadn't really slept much and came in and thought, oh, I'll write, let me write a song about. It's a great song. About hope and desire. And, and chocolate. That phrase, right, that was something Laurie used to say, wasn't it? Dip me in chocolate yeah. and throw me to the lesbians. I've since seen that 
on T-shirts in Australia. I think yeah. it's a kind of Australian thing that they say out yeah. there. That's right. They've got their, they've got some funny things going on there. Now these garlands, they, oh, what I love this garland. This you was. hated those garlands. No, yeah, I, I like the garlands. I, I like really like it. It's just that. It was it was all this malarkey about how they concealed on stage and how they yeah, brought on. Yeah, that's stagecraft, isn't it? That's stagecraft. And well, Jenny Arnold did a marvelous job yeah. here, our choreographer. Stagecraft. She's worked with everyone, you know, the Tweenies, uh, um, Noddy, Noddy, um, and lots of and lots of things that aren't <laughs> puppets as well. She's done, but she and she was she used to dance Tweenies, for Freddie and the Dreamers, Noddy, in the sixties, Stuart Lee. Yeah, <laughs> she's just such a she, and she did a really good job on the show, and as much as. A lot of them weren't, you know, they weren't dancers really. Some of them were, but a lot of them weren't. And she, she got, she used everyone to the best of their ability and really served the whole, the whole notion of what of what was going on. Fantastic. Yeah, Look right. at that marvelous dancing now as well. Yeah, all right, blimey. Thank you, baby Jane. <laughs> oh, uh, no, not not right now. Thank you. So, baby Jane. What is it you want to say to Andrea? Mama gave me smack on the asshole. Mama gave me smack every night. I love that bam, bam. Mama gave me smack on the asshole. What are you reading at the moment? What am I reading at the moment? I'm reading a book by Simon Reynolds about uh, post punk in 1978 to 1984. That's what I like. Atonal, clanging, post punk. Yeah. Not... Do you know what I'm reading? You're asking me what I'm reading? What are you reading? I'm reading this Goodfellas screenplay. Are you? And can I say about the good first screenplay? It's the most, well, just as a movie, the best uh, use of voiceover in movie history. Right. That would be, I'd say, if you study that movie. Well, we're trying to write some things for BBC Two mm. at the moment, so Rich is studying, <laughs> is trying to, is reading things to copy them. <laughs> no. Can I say to learn? Listen if to you'll, me. Know, you'll, you'll notice. What's this, um, what's this an impression of? So Montel. <sighs> me drinking. No, it's an impression of me drinking. Oh, right, well, you. <laughs> oh, just say something, just, just there you saw... Um, the, you the you see he's holding that little yeah. hat, right? Yeah. This was a kind of... This was one of my few uh, directorial decisions, which, which was that yeah. the um, Montel stroke Jesus character would have one or two objects that he hung on to, like someone of a fetishistic bent. And you'll see that in the second half as well. It's great, isn't it, sir? Well, we'll turn the speed up. Guy's really great as Steve, the bouncer. He's always on. He never slacked off. He, every moment he's, you know. Oh, it's good to see that little dance Lena was doing there. Yeah. <laughs> I never to be a <laughs> well, here we go. <sighs> what you gonna? What you gonna do? What you gonna do? Great. Oh, look at her. Like delightful. See Stephanie there dancing with her back to the audience. They like. <laughs> Is it arrogant laughing at something you, you wrote and Not seen it's hundreds fine. of times? With, um, with the benefit of hindsight. Ooh. More guilt after the break. Don't go away. Good. Oh, Very good. That was a nice little touch. Yeah. Why didn't you do that in the theatre? Why didn't you cut to that in the, in the theatre? Why didn't you cut to that thing there? We didn't have the... We didn't have the in the theatre, you don't have... A yes, cutting mechanism yes, you do. whereby you can direct the audience's yes, attention. Yes, you do. Yes, you have. Oh, yeah. And what is it? It's their eyes. Yeah, well, they, they, have, to, they, they have to notice. And what's nice about the way Peter Orton's directed this TV version of this is that... Um, Why are you joking? He's, he's kind of... He has, he's chosen moments rather than um, trying to get the whole thing. She's never going to do that. Well, you know what I think is good about it is that, you know, he could have been... You know, this could be like Holby City, but, but it isn't. It's got one of the people from Holby City <laughs> in it. <laughs> it could be an episode of Holby City, but it's not. And the fact that it's not an episode of Holby City makes it better for yeah. me. For you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is a nice song, I think. 
She did this ever so well. Uh, I have a warm glow of nostalgia for the show, watching really? it again now. Hard to believe it ever happened, isn't it? It's like a dream. It's like a mad dream. <laughs> well, for me, it's like a very long reality. <laughs> Very Janis Joplin, stay with me, baby, you know? Yeah. I love that lyric, stay with me, baby. It's not obviously not, you know. Do you think everything's a lyric, you know? Yeah. Everything I've wrote, just today I wrote a thing about harvesting Don't stem floor. Harvesting stem cells. Oh, really? small, you wrote a song about harvesting stem cells. Yeah, I thought we might do an Edinburgh this year. Right, great. I just everything is a lyric. This is Simon Munnery's face here. Yeah. Simon Munnery um, is a comedian that did this show we used to be in called Club Zarathustra. And um, that's where Richard did some opera stuff yeah. with Laurie and that. And it, um, he, he often does things where he uses images of me in a derogatory way. So I think I've won that battle now <laughs> by using him <laughs> in this night after night in front of thousands of people. He's brilliant now if you ever get the chance to see him. We used to do, when we first did the adverts at Battersea Arts Central, we used to do it on an actual slide projector, and I got really good at timing yeah. the slide projector. But, you know, when you get in professional theatre, they get yeah, you to... tellies and stuff. That's good. Just Stu chose all those pictures, they're very funny. This is funny. Ah, look at that funny picture. Ah, funny picture too. Ah, they are, I have to say, they're very good pictures. Oh, yeah. Here we are, now the trouble's starting. Oh, dear. Why don't they leave Jesus alone, these people that wrote this? What's their problem? You know, what's he ever done to them? This was just me slightly satirising guilt associated with the crucifix. See that crucifix that just flew up there, yeah. that wooden crucifix? Yeah. Richard Herring bought me that from Prague because he thought that the Jesus on it looked a bit like Frank Zappa. Mm. That's an amazing piece of trivia. <laughs> this is when it starts to go a bit wrong, isn't it? Don't you abound here? This song's good, right? But the next scene. Well, no, as, a, as I spoke before, I think, you know, it's, it is. Narrative exposition is very hard yeah. in music theatre, and I think this is as about as tight as it could go. Yeah, the next scene's this, you know, is the plot bit. Well, I think the it's first good. Half. I think, actually, I think it works better. I enjoyed the scene the most when I saw it being filmed on television. Right. If, I just was I'm such watch, a struggle I'm gonna, for me. I'm it, gonna, it, kind of, it went wrong really early on. I'm going to watch... I never got it back. I never managed to really make it work. What do you mean in terms of as a piece of... What, are you talking about I direction? It's the, it's the words as well, because I remember Alan McEwen, our investor, was always asking questions about this, and it, it just kind of got more and more... got so much weight got put on it, it just felt... And then the speech he does at the end... The speech that David does as Jerry at the end it's got mauled around as well because it, it feels very television actually. This is like yeah, actually it, wor it works, works as good. Better. It's bad theatre, but it's good television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Steve Abrahams has walked in to the uh, edit seat. This used to be when we first wrote this. You, we wrote about four of these scenes. Yeah. Do you remember those? Do you remember that, Stu? Remember those four long backstage well, they were scenes? All, they, were all, they were four short scenes. It just so they were long in my world. Yeah, they were long. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it was. You know, there was so much. Was good. There was so much narrative. It does look good on television. It just felt in the theatre. It suddenly felt very small and. They did it, everyone in it did their best, it just wasn't... Yeah, right. Don't beat yourself up about it too much. Oh, though. you know. It's just... It's done now. It's done now, yeah. If you thought it was that shit, why didn't you change it? I did, I tried to change it. I, I kept doing it differently all the time. You were there at the National Theatre. He'd have David Della there on the right, you'd give him different lines every day. When you... <laughs> I just remembered. Actually, I remembered. Yeah, right, it's all coming back now. I managed to erase it. Do you remember they used to be playing baseball? I came one day, they were throwing a yeah, ball. Yeah, I, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Do you remember the time they were playing volleyball? Yeah. That was really good. Do you remember that when they were dressed as um, flies? <laughs> yeah. Buzzing around. I quite like that. That was all I liked. Oh, I don't know what I was thinking there. Look at this. See, this is... I don't know what I was doing here. It's rubbish. I have to say, that was the only bit of... Oh. Oh, Matt. Too much of your time. Mr. Fucking Big Shot. Sunshine at your ass. Take your job it. It's been such a blast. Everyone knew as well. Everyone in that scene knew that it was a struggle. And they all sh soldiered on manfully. I quite like it now. Oh, i got a laugh there. Look, yeah. what are you talking about? It's fans. Best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> you grumpy cunt.
Titan. <laughs> Ooh, the, this is difficult as well because we had to change some of this for under under Springer's own insistence. Difficult in like a 12-hour mining shift. No, it wasn't as hard as working in a mine. No, but what I'm saying is, I, I, we had a speech here that worked, and then when Springer saw That's it true. in the West End, he was yeah, quietly free. furious about the show. Yeah, and he he said, "Hey, I've been straight with you, you know," and he wanted us to change some lines in this. And we did, and we did, but it. And then Alan Q and the American Investor wanted some changes to this bit as well. Or there was sort of loads of it. Just got it went all. It kind of goes round in circles back on it. When we if we tour this, I'll. Try and rewrite it. You need to know about politics. Mm. One, you'll never get anywhere. But David made it funny. You know he did it really true. well. And two, yeah. Some things should always be paid for in cash. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. You need to laugh though. You need to laugh at the end. You need yeah. a good little line that make. We want a, we want a speech where people think, oh, it'd be nice to see him really speaking again. When that bit was over there. Same here. We should just rewrite it. What were you well, thinking I did. Of? I tried to rewrite it so many times. What were you but thinking of? People kept having everyone's. Thank you, thank you. You everyone remember at the National Theatre when we were opening uh, there? Every night you'd go in the. You had to go in a green room. You got you got two investors. You got the people from the National. Everyone standing around you with. Yeah. Making opinions. The, opinions. Yeah. And it, luckily. Some were, but that's the way it is. Worked on that's it the way it years, is. I was deaf already, so I yeah. couldn't hear most of what they were saying. But it didn't matter. This is Alison Joya. She's fantastic. She's Australian, actually, which is where the best women come from. Australia. <laughs> and they had to be tough, didn't they, to survive on the ships when they were sent there as criminals. Is that? And their descendants. Basically, the only way that you could survive as a woman going to Australia was by being a kind of prostitute on the ship. So that's why all the women that survived in Australia are the most attractive women in the world. Um, but she's very good. She, she's to do this, do this part brilliantly. Good outfit. Chantel. <laughs> Chantel, I can see good outfit, because you know what's good about that outfit? I'll tell you exactly what's good about the outfit. What is good about is that when a lot of people come on the Jerry Springer show is they do make an effort. They really mm. dress up, you know, yeah. in a way that actually most people in theatre don't. I mean, look at us. You're completely dressed in black. I've got a manky grey T-shirt on. Yeah. I hazard a guess you haven't changed your knickers for a day or two. You've been to Glastonbury. Oh, I've got some new ones on too. You've got some new ones. So yes, yeah, so you, you have to buy a pair. New. You have to buy a pair. Yeah. Because they're all filthy. Yeah. This is Christopher Key. You did a good good job of this. He's a very different Chucky to the last one. He was much yeah. more wiry and uh, rangy figure. So Chucky, I take it you're not too thrilled with Chantel's pole dancing dreams. The thing about playing the Chucky part is it's difficult because... Can I just say, right. we used to have massive... Um, the, this When you used to audition Chucky parts, yeah. a Chucky would come in, and I don't know if you're doing it to wind us up, but you used to spend hours on every Chucky. Me? It's a short part, yeah. It was really funny. We used to laugh. You didn't realise. I didn't we, know, no. Me and John were laughing. When Chucky came on, it became... You'd get him to do it in about 20 different ways. Yeah, well... <laughs> That's good. Sorry. I'm sorry funny. for trying to do it well. So, sorry for trying to find the best person for the job. It just it was always Chucky. Yeah, well, the reason. problem was because there's not many. He doesn't actually have many lines. Yeah, that's either. true. Yeah. So he has to he has to <laughs> yes, carry a lot of yeah. weight in what he's. I'm not criticising. I'm merely saying it was funny. Well, why didn't you say at the time if it was bothering because you? Because it was. Um, it wasn't bothering me. I was finding it funny. All right. We were finding it was like a master class. It well, we, you we, smell we of it. shit all the way we through here. <laughs> the, I was only bouncing back the smell of shit you were sending out to me. Don't talk about that during this bit. It's lovely. This is another thing that she, she had to... She had, it, OK, at home, right, if you listen to this, guess right, Guess how long this song is. Guess how long... I'll tell you in ten seconds. Guess how long it is, right? right. If you get it right, you can email Stuart and get five pence of ox, worth of oxygen sent to you okay, down the email. In That's in an, not in an envelope. No, no, you don't want to do that. All right. Just send down the email. You okay. can send them five pence of oxygen. How long is this ballad? How long do you think? Julian Crouch, our designer and associate director, said that this was the song when he saw it at Battersea Arts Centre that made him want to get involved in the yeah. show because he said it moved him to tears and he felt that made me he wasn't to, expecting uh, that. It made me want to get involved in the show. <laughs> right, really? <laughs> <When I saw. laughs> what, after you'd written it? Yeah. Dude, what a beautiful woman Alison Joy yeah. is. Alison Joy does a great thing of um, a, song, uh, a singer, right? So you, I don't write, that's just written as a single note, but she does these lovely little trills, don't you know? 
Dan Solveig. It's great. You see, she's got a lot of taste, a lot of taste. It's really hard to do that stuff, and it's effortless, and it's beautiful. Anyway, the song comes in at about maximum 2 minutes 15 or 2 minutes 20. Really? Yeah. So what, what's your point exactly? My point is that it is a ballad which feels like it's 4 minutes, but it isn't. That's because everything else is so short. No, it's not really. No, I genuinely think if you sit through that and you think that is a long ballad, I think people would be very surprised to believe that it's not. People think, people, you know, critics and um, musicologists put into, they talk about you as if choice. your modus operandi is to write in very short bits, as if that was an actual choice that you made. But in fact, of course, you just have no attention span, do you? Well, and that's a lot of very short attention span. I think if you look at... You bore yourself. No, not really. I think, you know, there's... There, um, so you see how I'm taking it seriously? I'm, uh, I avoid things like introductions and outros and because, middles because I've watched uh, and middles <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you know they're dull in a theatrical context yeah I'd say it's a hard a hard part to play Chucky because you, you have to basically everyone in this you always want you know? to, well you want them to you want everyone to love the characters because yeah. you, uh, you never want people to feel that this is just taking the piss out of American trailer trash, right? You want the ideal is that you, you a bit. Hey, thank you, you know. very much. The thing, the thing Good Chucky, day at the office. You know, he's in the Ku Klux Klan, and you're saying to the actor, oh, you've just given away the story again. You've got to find something you like about this person. What do you like about him, Chucky? <laughs> well, I like it, the fact that he's in the Ku Klux Klan, because I'm racist. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be a very good member of the Ku Klux Klan. No, no I'm not. I, what I like about him is... Aren't you? Are you not a member? No. Are you saying now you're not a member? I'm not a member of the Ku Klux Klan, no. You just said you was. Well, I was. You said you was a member. No, now you says you wasn't. No, I'm not. Well, I mean, well, what I like about him is that he's he's a hurt. He's 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 going out of his mind because his wife's being a pole dancer. Yeah. He doesn't know what to do, so he's. I, I like to think that he joined the Ku Klux Klan for the comradeship, as much as anything, as much as the race hate. Look, his shirts come under. Chucky. The thing about Chucky is he's weak. He's weak. Yeah. That's all. And that's uh, he's. We're all weak, aren't we? Well, I are. am strong. <laughs> I've had a great speech in um, Pulp Fiction. Don't I, quote it. Oh, cool, yeah, OK. Mm. Can I say Pulp Fiction? No. Yeah. OK. That great sp It's from the Bible. You can't quote that. You can quote the Bible. Not, no, we'd better not start doing that. We'll get in trouble again. That's a good bit. You're in enough trouble as I it like is. I like the Bible. I think the Bible's great. You know? It's... I think... All the religious bits are totally Stuart's fault, by the way. Anybody sending... Yeah. What's he... What's he... Um, <laughs> what's the Christian equivalent of a jihad? Uh, it's Christian voice. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're the innocent one here, Chuck. Christian voice ad. Yeah. I ain't easy, but I'm honest. So no secrets, then. I like flowers more than people. Oh, that's quite moving. Yeah. Did that well, didn't I it? I like that. It was good, yeah. No, Jerry. That's an well, example that's where you have to do that line really straight. Yeah. It never works. And people, camp. you know, there have been. The Jerry camp. And to be honest, we were a little <coughs> surprised by what we saw. God, where's our lunch? Here we go, the Jerry Cam. Now, this was filmed at um, oh, a little club that. called the 12 oh, Bar in oh, London. I to get a jacket potato for Christ's sake. Uh, this is Karen O, who's a friend of ours, who's a... Better not be cold. A dancer. You know, That's that? good, that bit. Yeah. The, the, did the you research that by going to pole dancing clubs? No, you? I've never been to one. Ever? No. Well, this is the toilets at the um, I've got, um, at the twelve bar club. They've it's been those toilets will have been used by uh, many uh, up and coming uh, rock bit. stars over the years. I like the hat bit, that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> we had to shoot some, um, you know, multiple versions people. of that oh, sorry, at no. the end of that because obviously there's so many people are ill all the time. In music theatre, you have to put the covers on them. So there was loads of different 
I once did that, Chucky. Did you play Chucky? I yeah. think everyone had done all the parts by the end. Oh. Oh, well done. Isn't that yeah. ridiculous? He's a 30 to 40 year old professional man. He's in a DVD. Oh, hang on, Don't it? take the call. John. Now. John, I'm doing a DVD thing at the moment. That's his manager, John Thoday, the producer who's oh, obsessed with the, stairs. You've ordered my, he's ordered my boxes, that's great. Oh, yeah. listen, can, can I. Can you get off that I, now? It's ridiculous, it's insulting to the people that have bought quid this. For some Turn it boxes. off. I've got, I've got it's really meeting. insulting to the people that have bought I'll pay you tomorrow. Thanks a lot, Joe. Bye. Sorry about that, viewers. Ah, I missed my best bit. I missed my best bit. Yep. Get your phone off now. Christ's sake. Oh, I really enjoyed that. Of course, you copied this from the producers, didn't you? No, I didn't. No. <laughs> you didn't copy. Well, no, I know. I sort of. There, there are, I, well, I have to say, though, when I had the idea of the Cooper's Plan tap dancing, I couldn't believe that Mel Brooks hadn't had it. I think this is the only. This is the only gag Mel Brooks didn't get, that he never have. Right. In his, in his oeuvre. Do you think? Yeah. I don't know, I'd never seen anything. Uh, by Mel Brooks? I'd, I'd seen the film, I'd never seen the... Um... He has dancing. Yeah. In the show. <laughs> no, yeah. You wouldn't believe the fuss this cross caused, you know, without having to get it... Because the, um, the flame rules were different for uh, we Westminster, which was north of the river, when we went yeah. into the West End, and whatever the county council was, where the um, whatever the local authority was, where the national flame was. Westminster? Oh, I don't know. Apparently, things flame? burn differently in north, north of the river. All this malarkey with who's shooting the gun and everything, this took ages to figure out, because we're basically yeah. trying to solve a plot point. You wanted him to be killed by um, the... Uh, you, you know, you wanted him to be killed by the warm-up man. Yeah, I did, and, you, and, oh, you, and we I had didn't. quite a bad argument. We had a that, very bad argument about that, yeah. actually. Uh, and but so some that's, something that's, that that's some the, kind of compromise that's the slightly reached. horrible compromise. It's okay. It's okay. It it's makes okay. sense. It's fine, sort of, yeah. Why would I get shot? But you've got to admit, it's better. Yeah, it is. You're not right. even walking on and killing him like a, like an episode of Harvey City. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you're right. I remember. I, I can remember actually what happened was that. What did you like? What I, re, I re blocked it all while you were out of the room at the national and There's changed it all, and then you came in and you were angry. Uh, right. Look, we we should just mention we just had a break in between the first and second half, and we ate those that food that you heard us order earlier. Talk me through your jacket potato. It was nice, but while we were eating the food, we had a phone call from our manager who explained that um, the producer John Thody, uh, because of all the uh, protests from Christian Voice and the fact that the Arts Council didn't come through with funding, we're not going to be able to ever tour this in Britain. So, and actually, that probably means this DVD might possibly not be released. Yeah. So, but if you're watching this, then it has been. So, um, if we seem slightly embittered or angry yeah. for the next hour, I'm gonna it's because we are. I'm going to fart. <laughs> That's what he thinks of that. <laughs> in tribute. Um, I'd say this is the second half now. This is a, a nurse who's Sorry, singing in really purgatory. That is disgusting. A lot of people found didn't like this, but I thought it was good because it was sort of created a, a change called, of mood. It's called gloomy nurses. This bit. Yeah. Was, the difficult thing about this was the smoke, right? Because Julian's design. The smoke was very important to it, and um, weirdly, when it, the, the National was south of the Thames and um, slightly below sea level, I think. And when we moved up to the West End, which was higher ground, the way that the smoke settled atmospherically was entirely different, and it took ages and ages to get it in at an acceptable level. Plus, all the people on stage became very concerned about how it was affecting their voices, and wow. it was a real nightmare. So, what were you hearing when you wrote this, Rich? That's a good question. I'm trying to let me cast my mind back. Um, do, 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 do. Just wanted a choral thing, but uh, slightly French. Slightly just, French? Just, just, that's actually not French. I, do you know what? The truth is I can't remember. I can't remember what it was. I just wanted something, uh, a slow build with a lovely little climax. Are you sure that's mine? I never eat sweet corn. Of course, it was pointed out to us an American wouldn't say sweet corn. They just they say, say corn. They don't have sweet, they just have corn. Not sweet corn. Steve! It's good to see you. Hey. Oh, you never let me down. Is that a real but cigar? You didn't take that bullet. No, it's slightly bigger than a real cigar. Oh, yeah. For comic effect. Oh, he's great, isn't he, David yeah. Soul? He can really act. This looks great on TV. I 
I like. I think when actors like act really well when they're not speaking. Steve, yeah. How cool is this? Singing nurses. <laughs> A giant cigar. And look, my own moving chair. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Right now, there there's these uh, here the walk here are these walkways that they come on. Um, this was a point of contention at the National, which was initially they were worried that it wasn't going to work, but they let us do it anyway, and then they decided it did work. So that was good. This was this this whole guest coming on and singing little solos was a hangover from the earlier version, wasn't it? This kind of survived. What, what would you talk about? Um, what you know, your, your initial plan for the second half? Well, when uh, I initially wanted. Um, them all suspended upside down like an executive toy, and uh, so you'd have five, like um, sort of five ball bearings. You know the one though, those executive toys where you pick up one of the ball bearings and yeah. drop it, and the other one at the you other end. To do that with opera singers. Yeah, you want <laughs> them to sing upside down. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't want them to literally bang their heads into each other. But it would have been good. It, oh, I think mean, great. So uh, whilst singing about what happened to them, maybe they've been, and then during that song, oh how my heart um, aches for love. Aches for love. Basically, this giant heart was going to come and explode with yeah. blood all over the stage at the end of it. Eggs, eggs, with blood. But the actual realities of doing that, the practical realities of doing that, are unimaginable. You could do it in a movie, though. Well, basically, there always was a dark second half, even before we went with the, with the mm. religious theme. This is very much like... If, if you um, watch Vile stuff, as in Kurt Vile, he's very much a song songster. Just like a sort of collage of songs. In a way, this is very violin, right. I would say. The next sort of five or six pieces. That's, I know that's quite boring, but to me it's quite... That line, I like that. eat it, squeak, I copied that off Samuel Beckett. That means it's clever. You teef. You were teething. You did you do some teething off um, yeah, Samuel I'm Beckett? Yeah, i out all the bits that are stolen in the okay. second half now. And a lot okay. of them are the bits that people complained about. And really? Some of them are, you know, hundreds of years old. Weird. Do 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 do. And a few counter melodies. Do do be do be do be do. Sounds like lawyer talk. Don't say anything. Mm, ching. One day you're seventeen, seventeen, seventeen. Then just before you oh. eighteen, eighteen. What? Suddenly, that sounds nice. Suddenly, Reminds me of a. Uh, the show <laughs> it reminds you of the show yeah. watching and listening to the show reminds, me, reminds exactly. you of the show yeah it does yeah. Well, you've got your whole life ahead of you and you're one good looking woman there was loads more of these wasn't there than a lot longer than uh, cut tons, yeah god yeah this is a nice song this is very Kurt Vile, I'll have to say if I was going to say you know I like the fact that some of the guys dressed up as nurses had beards. <laughs> we just we just decided to dress them all as nurses and not try and give them false breasts or do anything with it. It just sort of be a bit more strange. It's the kind of thing you have in a dream, isn't it? What? Did, what, did you dream about anything last night? Last night? No, you know what? Last night I fell asleep on a sofa. Really? I was so stressed out by everything. Oh, no. Uh, I did a stand-up gig and loads of mad people turned up. Um, what would they say? Well, there was the, uh, they weren't mad. It was just there was people from the Na National Humanist Association wanted to talk to us, and the guy who's putting my live video out, and it just feels a bit. Everything feels a bit hectic at the moment, in in that respect. Uh, a bit frightening. This is nice. I like the way this is done. That's nice. Funny, you set a little... on fire, your husband of 15 years? What was it, your anniversary? <laughs> you know, I think Michael Brandon thought that line up when he, he played the part before. Uh, I've got an idea he might have ad-libbed uh, that uh, at some point. This is a weird one, actually, this yeah, song, because um, I'm not sure. it didn't really fit with her story. Every, everyone else's songs in this bit seemed like they mm. followed on from the first half, and this one, she, she not unreasonably asked questions about it because it doesn't quite really fit with the plot line in the first half. But it's a good song. But, but it's about being attacked violently, and the diaper man that's her partner in the yeah. first half doesn't look like the kind of person that would 
it's a flaw. Somewhere. It's definitely a flaw. Musically, it's fine. She obviously needed to sing something, but yeah. I guess yeah, that would be a. Obviously, when we visit it for the tour. <gasps> Oh. <laughs> Don't cry. Rich was just saying, oh, we can change that for the tour, and then realise that won't happen. You can change it in your own imagination. That's as good, isn't it? It's doing a tour. Why aren't we rich? Why? Because you haven't... You should do, um, do a Coca-Cola advert, Stu. You know you want to. You don't want to do that. And a Barclays bank. <laughs> This is nice. He looks slightly like Ethel Merman, though, doesn't he? <laughs> he looks like Ethel Merman. <laughs> doesn't he? Yeah. I don't know who's the most insulted by that, Ethel Merman or Ryan Malloy. I think they should. Okay, this is the phrasing just about to come up. It's really good. This next next bit. Lovely. That is musicality. That's fantastic like musicality. That? I love it. Is that it's not actually. It's not as you wrote it, though. Not quite. Well, what it sort of is, is what he's done is he's, uh, he's just slightly back phrased it, but then caught up and just ended on the bleed. This really there, bit right, of perfect we, thing. We were, we were going to do a record with Sony whereby um, famous people sang the songs. I, I wanted Morrissey to do this song. But I think they wanted uh, someone from Boyzone to do it. Yeah. It didn't really work out in the end. Yeah. Steve, I think we better get out of here. There is only this is good one cure yeah. for unrequited love Chocolate and howling at the moon Ow. Ow. Look at that. That's, that's great! Oh, that's Peter good. Orton, the TV director, oh. thought of that. Because she's saying moon, and you can see the moon in the shot. Yeah. That's what directing's about, you know? <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't know. You have to look for relationships between image and content. Yeah. Some people would say it was heavy-handed what he did there, but I think it was good. You know what? It's been great catching up with you guys. <laughs> and you've taken some knocks, but you've got to pick yourselves up. Dust I think this was another off. thing that... Um, and have a magical day. I think, I think Brandon might have improvised that, because he was talking about being at Disneyland when he played the part, and that's the kind of thing they say to you at Disneyland. Okay, diaziri means um, um, and the anger of God, by the this way. means anger of God. Diaziri. So that's from Requiem. This is a nice bit. Dead woman walking. What's that from? Has that got some meaning? Well, dead man walking is when they the thing they shout when someone's about to be executed. Oh, right, right. Got that from some it movie would have been or good, other. wouldn't it, if I'd asked you questions about what the lines meant before yeah. I directed it? Yeah, it's a bit late now, isn't I know. it? <laughs> I just thought it didn't seem to matter. No, it's The important works. thing is... It's still The alive. important thing in directing is... Are the people facing the front, and can you hear what they're saying, I think? I think trying to understand the piece is... That's quite a legendary approach. It's insolent. <laughs> it's unnecessary. That looks good, doesn't it, on not the telly? Bad. That's not a real head. It's not really smashed into her head. It's like um, a false uh, okay. wound on her This head. next song I still really, really like, Your Dreams. You know, Steve, it's a great song. A person with less broadcasting experience might feel responsible. Clever. That's satire, that is. Yeah, that's why I didn't get a laugh. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> this is a nice song. Oh, I'll sing it, babe. I like the way Steve gently pulls him back at the yeah, end of this. Yeah. He did it really well. He was great as like the. We always used to talk about it as Don Quixote and Sancho Panza as the faithful follower. Mm. And it's so it's so discreet. He doesn't embarrass anyone involved in that situation. He does it like a great a great I servant with sleight of hand. Like. <laughs> does he? <laughs> no, you're right. It does. It does. I think it does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I'm not going to say any more stuff. Oh, go that. on, no, it's nice. Just talk about coffee and stuff. No, after we've cut that bit out. Oh, right, oh, yeah. We've cut that bit out. I will just say I am disappointed with the coffee I'm drinking right now. That's all I'm going to say. Get hung up on that again. Well, I just said I'd, you brought it up again. All right, forget it. Just talk well, about you this. Don't bring it up. Enveloping countries and Germany. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, uh, they love it. Understand why they didn't pick the show up. So I'd say it was a brave beginning to a second half. Yeah, it was. I mean, I was, this was one of the things that um, one of the producers was 
anxious about, but I think it's, I think it's good because I think you needed to, you needed to let the people know, they, the, the audience, they were going to have to tune in because it was going to get difficult. And I think that this, um, you know, for a piece of commercial theatre in London's glittering West End, this is a really weird thing to have people sitting and looking at. And um, you know, you kind of you forget. In the context of where it was performed, it was a really radical show. Yeah, I have forgotten. <laughs> well, I've just reminded you. Can <laughs> okay, you remember thanks. now? Yeah, I can. You, remember, you know this? This was it, what you're looking at now. Yeah. <laughs> up a basic misunderstanding right now. I you remember when we wrote this speech, right, because we were really struggling with this, and we were in the rehearsal room at the National Theatre, you and me. It's funny how these speeches, they tend to do the hard work in the end, do the last things to change. Yeah, there was no one else there, and we were... We were jump. They were they were all doing photographs next door, and we were jumping on and off the stage, practicing, trying to do it differently, and shouting it at each other. And I think you wrote most of this one, and it was really good. City of 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 wind. You all knew the risks. You signed the disclaimer. So stop breaking my balls and get out of my. Steve, where the fuck are you? It was such that, a relief whenever we got one of those speeches right. You basically need to drive the thing forward with the minimum of, cl of kind of clutter. And, um, he, and but David Soul did them really well as well. Mm. Chosen for what? Will you people stop fucking with me? Oh, it's good. That's good. You notice he's got one foot, one cloven foot. I got the idea for that from a, a puppet I saw of the devil in Prague. Um, where he had one cloven foot, and then I looked into it, and it's kind of classic medieval representation of the devil that he had one cloven foot rather than two. This is the um, the cunt song. This is the cunt song. Yeah. If you guess how many, guess how many cunts are in this song, people. You got. There aren't 8,000 cunts, as no. the Daily Mail or the Sun said. There are, in fact, only nine. Nine, and three of them are adjectives, anyway. Yeah. And, the and listen, people are clapping it. They love it. I think they, they, I think they did something whereby they multiplied the swearing by the amount of people on stage yeah, singing. Yeah, but even so, that still doesn't make 8,000, does it? No. There's 174 swear words in this show. Oh. It's not even the most sweary thing that's ever been on television. It's so unfair. Steve! That's classic... Terry King fighting. Yeah, Terry King was a fight director. Was... Ooh. And no, the crowd go, Ooh. He was really good, Terry King. It was ma ma amazing to work with this fight director. That firing thing. <laughs> that is of what? no concern. So, anyway, uh, there's a little story here. There's a little song coming up in a bit where um, uh, one of the producers said, we need to increase the jeopardy for um, um, f for Jerry. So, uh, so you can yeah. guess which is the which song increases the jeopardy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Time out, time out. Let's rewind this a little. Now, I don't want to serve in hell. At this stage of my career, that would be a sideways move. Satire. Come, Jerry. Oh, it's not until later. No, it's later. It's later. Tell us about this song. Well, this is um, a kind of in it as well. Yeah, it was a kind of it's a list song, isn't it? Of a. It's also the first kind of. You normally would. St it's a big number. Yeah, you'd start a second half opener with a uh, a big a number like this. Yeah. A great example of that. A sec actually, a really good example of a second half opener is um, if it's too darn hot. Cole Porter song, which is fantastic. Correct. Uh, I think I've got that right. In my memory, it's the second half opener for some reason. I don't know why I say that. Well, why not? David Padella is very good at being a devil. Uh. He, 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 it's partly because he 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 wants to. He, he's very keen to sort of be loved by an audience. So it kind of is very charming in a way that a devil would have to be. Mm. Quite kind of casual with it. Here you can see uh, these animations that Julian Crouch made at the back. Um, I think they were assembled from um, studies of mental patients in the early 1900s. 
There's Ian McCaskill's face there. Um, they're great, really. The, the detail on those is brilliant. I mean, if you. This was filmed at the um, the Tate Gallery. Those escalators. Really? And, yeah. And originally, we just went there to demo it, to try. We just went and shot some stuff randomly. And when Julian played them back, Bill Oddie was going down one of the escalators. <laughs> he was on the. Um, he was on one of the escalators. Yeah. Did you know Is that? he in there? I never knew. No, that. He's, no he didn't no. make the final cut, but oh, he was. He nice. was going around the Tate Gallery. Which is not. I wish he had been in it. Tell me more stories, Uncle Stewart. <sighs> There's a whole debate here about. That's not a real beard, is it? Is that, no. No, it's not a real head. <laughs> the beard's the only real part of it. <laughs> it's a false head stuck onto a real beard. <laughs> it's good. It looks good. Yeah. You'd never guess it. No. There was a whole kind of debate going on all through this about. Well, I, I, it should be cut. Or well, not. I think this is a great song. I like and it. I, I like the story it tells, and I think it holds attention. And I really like breaking the mood. But there was a whole thing of like whether David Bedell of the Devil should look at his watch during it to get a laugh, uh, yeah. or whether whether that was a good thing or a bad thing, and did it did it look like we weren't confident in this moment, or did it actually help it out? And I can't remember what. There's an argument. Oh, there it is. Look. In a way, I, don't I don't mind it, actually. I, I think it's quite I think good. It. I, I kind of th think it's OK. Yeah. I think it's work. I sort of works. It's slightly, then it's uh, musically, because she's um, hitting there. Da, 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 the actual climax of that swell is a... Uh, it slightly uh, ruins that a bit, but I think on the whole... Yeah. Tell him again, tell him again. We've got really serious now, haven't we? It doesn't matter, does it? Yeah. There's the elephant man going down. Oh, There's the down man. There's the blah blah man. Who's the blah blah man in the TV? I don't know. It looked like Frankie Howard. I don't think it was Frankie no. Howard. Uh, this was took so long to do. Yeah, those people walking down steps, they're from early pictures of studies of people with mental problems. Yeah. They're great. And he, he animated them really simply. And when we first got into the West End, you know, the producers They're did this thing people. of you've got to spend, you've got to tart it all up. And so they, they kind of cleaned those animations up and made them more high tech. And they, they look worse because actually what's beautiful about them is the, the fact that you can see the craftsmanship of it. Wait a minute! I'm confused here. Why are you dragging me down to hell? I don't deserve this. I'm not a bad guy. I just got lucky. That's all I mean. Jesus! Is that a sin? No. Well, you see, they agree. Have you noticed how we stop talking when he starts talking? Yeah. That's the rhythm, sort of rhythm being. It's quite a small little booth here. This was the part where one of the one of the producers kept saying, "Where's the jeopardy? Where's the jeopardy?" Yeah, Which is kind it. of American thing to say. They, when you go to pitch films or sitcoms in Hollywood, they always say, "Where's the jeopardy?" But um, it, it was a good question, right? Because where was he, the he, he wanted to make it explicit what what Jerry had to lose, and um, now, what do you so. Want from me? We've, we've, we kind of over-explained it in a way that amused us, and actually, minute, let me get this straight. here, you this is, a show for you? let me get this straight, it's basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. does everyone let understand? Let me recap, let me summarise, blah, 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 yeah. blah. Look, I'm under exclusive contract to USA Studios, oh, yeah. and they got a whole building full of lawyers. Now, you'd have to talk to the head of the company, and he's not here right now. Yes, he is! Yes, this, he is! This is a... This Bust of Jonathan Foddy, the producer. Producer's head. Yeah, look. When um, the British, there was a hostage crisis involving beheading, and we, we dropped that out of it for about a week at the time. Did you? I never knew that. Yeah, well, because it just, when the head was thrown on after that guy got beheaded, uh, Ken, was it Ken Bigley? I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was sort of, it was actually, um, it was just the audience responded to it really differently, and it's interesting how symbols symbols don't exist in isolation from what's going on in the world. And it, in, when we go into hell in a bit, and um, the bodies are falling down, often Americans like, used yeah. to think that that was about nine one one. Oh, you didn't cut. I mean, I don't, no, I don't like I him when people cut things out because I think it's, no, I think it's a what? wrong. He, but response. he was on stage having to do that. He was having yeah. to toss around a severed head when there was severed heads in the news. It was just freaking people out. I mean, I. I, Who was I, it freaking out? The audience or the, the audience uh, and, and David Soul. Fair enough. I mean, oh, you know, right. I know what you mean. But see this, see this thing here. People used to come up regularly and go, 
it's offensive that you use those images from the World Trade Center. And like, they weren't, they weren't, you know. Mm. But that, it's kind of as if that images are falling and now monopolized by the great American tragedy. Mm. Yeah. I remember actually when we first did, when the show first did well, when we did the first, one version of it was way back in. Yeah, actually we used to have a song about in fact, insurance. In fact, no, it's, uh, which uh, involved loads of images of air crashes that we yeah. had to drop after 911. Also, there was a thing about should we, um, should, should we have a minute silence before? Um, do you remember the uh, September uh, yeah. thing for the and um, actually Tom Morris decided everyone was doing that all across London. Everyone's yeah. having like a minute silence before any show, before anything, and Tom <laughs> felt that it was somehow that was like. That was a kind of um, emotionally pornographic to do that, yeah. and I think he was right. I think he made good, it was a good call not to do it because, if anyway, sharp-eyed viewers will now will notice that this uses the same um, language as the setup at the start. Look, it may not be suitable for viewers without a strong grasp of Judeo-Christian <laughs> mythology, yeah. right? Hey, who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? That's supposed to be a gag. That's supposed to be a gag, and it ends up kind of costing us our livelihood. <laughs> What, what are you the irony about? is that people with a strong grasp of Judeo-Christian mythology really like, it. really like it. It's armchair Christians like you, Stephen Green, if you're watching, you twat. You know, for the tour, which isn't now happening, to save money, those pipes that yeah. you can see on the left there have been cut from the design. Have they? So, so have those walkways. Even if we had toured this, this would have been the only way that you this could see pipes. what yeah. those pipes look like, those yeah. pipes there. Yeah. Apparently it's very expensive to tour false pipes around Britain. It's prohibitively expensive to do that. This jetty. They had to run a really long way around there to get there, and they were always shattered by the time they got there. <laughs> Which meant that David Soul wasn't so much acting as just genuinely physically exhausted. He was reacting. <laughs> yeah. He falls yeah. over here, actually, and it looked really good. Oh, no, in a bit, he it's, trips you know what, over. What was great about uh, David Soul is he really doesn't mind looking messy and no. unkempt and He's a bit like... No, he, look, <laughs> that's him genuinely falling over. <laughs> Oops. This was always a struggle, like, what to do with these... I, I always thought that... Whatever you did with these people in the trucks at the back, the uh, devil changed. audience in hell, it, it, it just, mm. it always feels a little bit like... When you should say, you say that's jargon, trucks. Yeah, sorry, trucks. trucks. Yeah. Well, what, explain to them what a truck is. Well, a truck's a big thing you can fly in and move about. And uh, Anyway, I always felt this looked a bit theatrical at the back. I never was quite happy with it. But they did a, but this, oh, sec this second cast did a really good oh, job yeah. of yeah. holding the focus. Um, keep going, I just need a poop. OK, I'll keep talking while Rich goes to the toilet. That um, microphone's got all smoke coming out of it. Can you see? Can you? Can you see it? Don't talk about depressing things. All right, I won't. OK. The irreconcilable and giving both parties some sense of... See, and again, when I listen to this bit, I don't really don't understand what all the fuss was about with the complaints, because it's, makes, it kind of makes it fairly explicit what's it about, what it's about and what it's meaning is the prince of darkness this next bit the words for when the satan comes on i didn't so much write them as copy them exactly from milton's paradise lost and um when i first heard richard set them to music it was at battersea art center and um the jazz singer ian shaw was singing them and i was just i was absolutely blown away i couldn't i never thought anything i'd written would be have anything like this done with it. But I didn't write it, I copied it. Another funny thing about all the complaints is, you know, it's not a new idea to have uh, stuff with a religious theme that's sympathetic to the devil and critical of the notion of God as a tyrannical figure. I mean, we copped all that from, from Paradise Lost, which is 350 years old. My crown, oh, then God hurled me from the skies. Not Sorry, I was drifting off there. I'm doing exactly what Rich told me not to do while he's gone to the toilet, which was to become morbid and nostalgic. Simon Munnery had a good line, you know. He said, uh, in Russia, nostalgia is a crime, or at least it used to be in the good old days. Oh, I'd 
love to have seen this going around the country. It would be interesting to see what people would have made of it in different places. And it would have been good fun being on the road with David Soule. He always manages to get pubs to stay open late. That's the power of celebrity. You seem upset. You know when he goes, when he says things like, oh, you seem upset, or whatever, um, you, know, you seem upset, you seem surprised, whatever. I read someone on the internet complaining that that was basically the same joke of understatement over and over again. And of course they're right, but it is what Jerry Springer himself actually does. What did, you, what did you say when I was gone? Oh, uh, nothing. He's come back now. You went down to Earth. Seriously, what did you say? I, don't, you I was just talking about how delighted I was when um, I first heard the music that you'd set that devil's opening number to there. Oh, yeah, that was a good bit. First one, yeah. Can't find the And that was very kind of uh, Milton, wasn't it? Yeah, it's from Blanco's Did you do all that? Yeah. Oh, you said all that. So let's see if we can get an apology from my next guest. The hypocrite son of the fascist tyrant on high, Jesus of Nazareth. Also, you know... This is a nice song. I like this song. Oh, no, that's... Oh, this used to be part of a longer song, didn't it? Yeah, this got cut down. Grab his pants and pull them down. And this is, listen to the song. I like this song. There's hundreds of songs in this show. Can I just point out once and for all that that oh, is not Jesus, a nappy? A yeah, it's a loincloth. It's a loincloth. If you've seen a nappy like it that, is a, what it's baby only. has ever worn a nappy like that? I should explain. We've had a lot of complaints about Jesus wearing Jesus nappy. In a nappy. He's not in a bloody so nappy. Ahead, yeah. He's in a he's in it's a, a loin cloth, spangly loincloth, as befits his holy status. Also, I think I think the Jesus in the show, in the show is a lovely Jesus. He is a good Jesus. Also, he's a figment of Jerry's imagination. A, a few seconds Jerry's before this is to any. Why are we saying this when obviously nobody in Christian voice is going to be watching this? Oh, Why are we talking? To... <laughs> they'll be watching it and tossing themselves off with anger. <laughs> oh, not Come on. Exactly. So now, um, okay, this is a, this is very this is Handel pastiche, pure delightful. Anybody anybody into opera, just go and listen to Handel. It's, just, it's completely beautiful. You listen to Handel, it'll take away all your blues, or well, most of them, some of them. Guy had to do this, you know, night after night. He must have done this 450 times, and he he would go through phases of this is Guy who plays Steve the Bouncer in the middle. He'd go through phases of doing it really, really well, and then it would go off the boil, and he, he just it went in endless cycles because it was such a struggle for him to uh, always find this moment. And he, he was so he worked really hard at it. Well, we all worked hard at it, Stu, didn't we? You know, we all, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Look, I'm I'm aware, Rich, that members of the cast and crew are going to be watching this, and that's why I'm trying to individually name them and praise their work. You know, and whereas so you, you... You're compromising yourself. I'm not. I'm just trying to make everyone feel... Happy. ...flattered and included, you know. What about, uh... <laughs> you included, um... I've included as many people as I, I've... Have you included Pete Orton? I mentioned Pete Orton. When? When you put the moon in. Oh, you mentioned... Yeah, I feel that was slightly... There was an element of... That could be considered as derogatory, that comment that you said about Pete. So. Pete's pointing at you, saying it's your idea. <laughs> it was there. Oh, you lying <laughs> son of a of a of a of a, of a woman. <laughs> Big line coming up now. Great line. Watch this line coming up now. Good day, at the office. Good day, at the office coming up. Watch this line. Watch this line. Love it. Love it. Come on, baby. Talk to. You know, I, I wrote a lot, a lot of the words for the second half, but people would always say that was their favourite line in the second uh, half. And, and I it wrote wasn't that one line. of mine. Yeah. Uh, this I win. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Most people thought you write it all anyway, so it doesn't matter. I know, it's unfair, isn't it? <laughs> I prefer to use the composer, Stuart Lee. Yeah. <laughs> no See, what are you doing? You're making the situation worse. Jesus has flown a long way to be here today. This is That's a good line. Good. Optimistic Jesus in this. I love it. Yeah. 
So he turned some water into wine. So he walked up. I don't really understand why people would say this is blasphemous because it's it's the devil slagging Jesus off. That's what he does, isn't it? Yeah. You know, that's his character is to hate. <laughs> this is a nice. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, I've been seeing this for ages. You know that biscuit thing, right? Yeah, yeah. That's from. Um, I mean, obviously, there's a there's a sort of Community relationship thing, yeah. with an ocean community, yeah. but it was something Harry Hill always used to say. If you were complaining about something, when I was working with him, he'd go, oh, "Have a biscuit," and uh, <laughs> that's why I put that in. <laughs> Just, it's kind of that's good. Yeah, but know, there's, nice there's another it? object as well that he's. Holding. But what's really nice about it is you have a thing of intense anger, righteous anger. Yeah. Biblical. It's, this is righteous anger. It's written as a song about that. And you've got some man throwing a biscuit. So, you know, we, it is a comedy as well. Yeah. And comedy doesn't... This is good. And comedy is about... It's a noble art. around. Yeah. And... Here we go. Actually, I am a bit gay. Oh, dear. That's where the trouble started. Yeah. Oh, no, I remember when... I remember coming into it, your studio it. in Brixton. Bring out the flak jackets. That. Bring out the bulletproof kit. And quick. I, remember, I remember you'd written that, and I found that so funny. And then we, I, we had to have a discussion about what did we think it meant. And your people are going to have to work with And you me. came up with a really good... Obviously, I thought it was really I funny. Up with a good excuse You came line, up with a great excuse. Which was that, you know, as the embodiment of man... Uh, yourself, if he, so that he could understand our hopes and desires, Jesus would have to embody many different forms of sexuality. But also, it's not. But it's really the point is, well. right? They say it, it's just a bit gay, and a lot of people are a bit gay. That's quite a good thing. It's like basically you have people on the one end of the pole who are totally gay and totally yeah. straight. That's yeah. one out of ten totally straight, one out of ten totally gay. What about the other eight? Are yeah. we to forget them? Are we to forget them, Stuart? I don't know. I mean, oh, this is a nice. Listen. This is a really quick bit of music. It's about four bars. That little thing was based in, yeah. on a, I did a little drawing of that. It's really and good. And gave it to Julian Crouch and he made it. It's really nice. I was thinking of kind of medieval mystery plays and that's what, that's what I kind of had that in mind for all of this, of like it feeling like something you'd have seen in 1500 in the middle of a Yorkshire village. How's the uh, relationship going? <laughs> Except you won't see it in Yorkshire now, obviously. <laughs> no, or, or any village. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good costume for them that yeah, she came up with. Lovely. Brilliant, because they, they kind of look like uh, white trash on holiday, but they're also, it's got this Garden of Eden theme going through it. For just a moment. Uh, Eve, what is it you want to say to Jesus? For one little hour. Uh, don't talk to me, talk to Jesus. This is great. We have one on a little tree. We get a life of grief and misery. She made me do it, made me do it. You had your chance and you blew it. Forbidden fruit. Forbidden fruit. But vegetables allowed. That, see, that's from an old Richard Thomas song, Forbidden Fruit, Forbidden Fruit, But Vegetables Allowed. <laughs> yeah, just I think that is so funny. I don't like that no, at that, all. Yeah, I see, no, that wasn't written. I hate that. that. Wasn't, I hate that doing that. I, yeah. that. I was always telling her not to do it. Yeah. But, you that know, it like, annoys she me. She feels yeah. his cock. Yeah. No, and that was never written. No, I, I could see. To be honest, I could see why people would be offended by it. Yeah, well, it, because it's, it's gratuitous. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. Yeah, I know. It is, you know, it's, yeah. it's like, well, No, I wish she hadn't done that. But she's but, still you know, fabulous. But sometimes she's music theatre performers kind of they 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 they're looking for they're looking for the moment. You know. Hit a woman. Now I think you should apologise to her. You followed the way. Of you followed the way of ambition and vanity. And vanity. But it was about this really seriously, you know. I remember having a discussion about this because, of course, he should say, "But it was I," and we decided to keep it as "But it was me" because it was kind of childlike and casual in the middle of, um, in the middle of quite a highfalutin piece of language. It's one of those interesting bits in, in English where they write the correct thing is, is so often incorrect that yeah. it's a it's a grey area now, isn't it? Yeah. So this used to just be him singing this whole line. But then, yeah, we put this, this yeah. 
Which really works well though, because it somehow... There is a gag, but also it increases the tension. There was a... Why don't you get over it and give us all a fucking break? It's interesting because David, who plays the devil, is quite a devout Christian. And um, yeah. when uh, when they, they did a charity concert at uh, Colchester Cathedral and Christian boys came and picketed them, and the last thing they were expecting was for... Uh, one of our cast to be able to, because um, his partner's a priest, uh, one of our cast to be able to actually take issue with them in quite a profound and educated way. <laughs> well, he, he was really sweet as well. He said, um, come in and have a chat, and they all yeah. came in and they had a chat. Yeah. Didn't make any difference in the end, though. No. <laughs> Raped by an angel. Yeah. An angel. Well, Goodbye, God. you know, this, the, a lot of people took me up on that that line, and I, I know what I meant by it, which is... Actually, but I have to say, you know what? More people took me up on actually a bit gay. Yeah. So actually, if they had more issue with being a bit gay yeah. than raping well, uh, a teenage... Well, I, I think, I, you know, I'm trying to write a novel about this exact idea now, which is that the idea that... Um, you know what? What could what could a teenage virgin have understood of the notion of um, having sexual intercourse with a god? And to me, that is not a balanced relationship. And um, I, you know, I it think it wasn't a relationship. There was no it? relationship. Yeah, no. But there isn't because he obviously, you know, he got her off the duff, got her up the duff, and left. Yeah, but, you know, that's not going to help <laughs> what you've book. just said. <laughs> But that's one way of looking at it. Yeah. I'm only saying that's one way of looking at yeah, it. The that's other not way, what I really meant. The other way of looking at it is um, <laughs> from the rear of yeah. a I think <laughs> anti-aircraft gun. Yeah. No. You, uh, do we, there was a mirror ball in that bit. And uh, Rich uh, yeah. always says a, a, a show with a, a mirror ball is a seminar. Yeah. Oh, stand I think up. I think it's flown out now. Uh, do you know the funny thing? I remember when we did the Edinburgh... Rick Fisher, the lighting guy, he, he, brought, he brought a mirror ball in as a joke. Yeah. And, and I came in and went, wow, look at that mirror ball. Thank, thank God you finally saw, yeah. <laughs> saw the light. Yeah, although put most, in a mirror of, ball. most of the things that people put in as jokes. We'll Do you remember when they out. put that Afro wig on Jesus? Oh, yeah. I have to tell that was a very funny moment when uh, they put an Afro wig on Jesus and Stuart Lee famously and uncharacteristically was dumbstruck. He walked on stage, grabbed hold of the Afro wig and threw it away. I was watching at the time on the you top of the, um, and it was very funny. Righteous you know, anger. Is, it's not a joke. This show. You had to take it. You had to take it as seriously as possible within the confines of its inherent absurdity. Otherwise, I, it would cave in on itself. So, um, what are you doing after this? What today? No. Well, yeah, today and but in oh, general. I'm going to. Well, I've got a gig tonight. I'm going to try and learn my stuff. Oh, that's good. Then I'm going running for an hour. You're going to go running for an hour. Where are you going to run? Um, in uh, Regent's Park. I run around there. If anyone wants to come and uh, see a fat bloke running around, I'm normally there three days a week. That's good. Have you got that? Are your trainer rang me up actually on my my phone? Oh, by accident. It's not no, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. No. So it's not of interest, is it? No. To them. And then um, after this, well, I'm doing more stand-up, and then we're trying to write mm. some things for BBC mm. Two. Oh, uh, it's great! Look at him. Breakthrough moment, script-wise. We couldn't. We, 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 we. There was always a point where the second half went wrong, and it, it just kept changing. And then when we wrote this bit, we knew we'd kind of fixed mm. it up to a point. That's right. The problem just kept being postponed and pushed along, pushed yeah. along. Yeah. Basically, we had to, we had to resolve this notion of um, how are you going to equivocate between good and evil. And when we get to that bit, I'll tell you how we did it. We didn't really start with a... Um, we started with a one-act show and then yeah. tried to make a two-act show and uh, that had quite a lot of problems. Yeah. I thought it'd be twice as difficult, but it was about... 20 times. This is a good line. This is a good line. Fits. They're brilliant. This is fantastic, oh, isn't it? Oh, God. We are beholding him. This might... Be... I was thinking that was funny. Then beholding more. Behold what? More. Beholding more. So, that's funny. I think that deserved a laugh. Yeah. But actually, that is because I've written it so high. You can't. The addiction has really come through on that. Uh. If you look on the DVD extras, folks, you'll be able to see Rich singing this song as a Tom Waits parody. I'm 
This is as many ways a tribute to Tom Waits. This is my. F- I think this is a like figure in music. This is probably my favourite bit. Also, again, we got fuss about this, but they said we portrayed God as a sexual deviant, and we didn't. There's no yeah, point. There's no where sexual deviancy about it. His sexuality is never addressed, but he probably was gay. God. Who? God. But no, what he, he wasn't. <laughs> but his sexuality is never actually addressed in the show, so I don't know where this stuff about God being a sexual deviant came from that was used as another stick to close us down. But he, um, but the, the idea of God uh, saying, I don't know what to do, I've had enough, it's not a new idea, this idea of, like, where's God and... and it, it, do you know what I like about that bit? Is there's lovely little, uh, was it, you know, seat belt? Uh, yeah, he has to. Well, he has to be seat seat belted into that. Oh, as so well, health and safety. Health and safety, yeah. Ah, oh, it's really funny. Yeah. Oh, they've got a great belt. I mean, I find that funny, the idea that the omnipotent God would have to wear a seat belt in a flying chair. It didn't bother me. Ah. Oh. I'm hey. so happy I get to be here. God. You weren't on Satan's list of guests. What are you doing here? What do you want? Sit in him beside me. Hold my hand and guide me. I think he's a great god. I can't see why anyone... Why I people were annoyed. rings him. the first time ever. You, love, you know, if that was god... You'd they weren't really... Were they annoyed? I mean, I got lists. They were quite low down... Oh, that's funny. Mm. That's nice. In fact, it's difficult. Sit in heaven beside you. Look at those rings. Hold and guide you? Well, that's a no-brainer. I'm your man. <laughs> And Satan, you can take that barbed wire and stick it up your own ass. <laughs> Back into your sky. That's funny. I think that's funny, but he thinks he's won. It's always a Another new fight. <laughs> no, no, I love that bit. I don't think so. I don't think so. He's mine. I don't think so. I don't think so. Now, this no. whole section, we had terrible trouble with this for years. Mm. It wasn't until we actually had the resources to have a fight director and a choreographer. Uh, we were, we tried so many ways of filling yeah, this little space. Why, yeah, awful. we used to go straight, go straight to a fight, whereas in fact, because we had the, there was no yeah. reason for the fight, or it was yeah. just another fight, it was really old. So I remember, com- I remember when I realised that we would be able to... This is how we increased the jeopardy for Jerry. Most of the problems in the show were solved with music and script. But when we finally had resources, when we got into the national to have to build things, I said to Julian, "Let's put a gibbet in, uh, and we can fly him up in it, and then it will be great. kind of." Then he's obviously in some peril, and this is one of the few problems in the show that was actually solved by throwing money at the problem rather than um, throwing script manure. Work. Yeah. I have a dream. (laughs) I have a dream where everyone here turns to their neighbor. I went in that gibbet once. What was it like? Well, I was was a bit fat for it, and um, it was like wearing a kind of S&M corset. I quite enjoyed it. Is it quite scary? It's quite high up, isn't it? Yeah. It that bit's one. good fun when you drop. Didn't the jib and he fall? The jib it fell like one time, didn't it? Yeah, it, it fell. You know what? It fell. It, oh, there was man. a problem with it really early yeah. on, and it got caught up and it fell and it swung, and, and it nearly knocked a load of people over. One of whom was pregnant. Oh, and um, then Our we, so I think we pulled the show that night for, um, for, because we were worried about. Oh yeah, the, no, they didn't. The, no, they didn't no, the pla- it was halfway through. The platform jammed, oh, yeah. and the thing was swinging around. It was really dangerous, and we had to stop the show halfway through. And in other abstract concepts like smell. Wait, 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 wait! Please give me a third chance to sort this out. There's just one thing I want to say to everyone here today. I was backstage once and I accidentally brought my um, flamethrower in. Oh, and yeah. they um, told me to leave Did it outside. Did you fire that killed all those costume uh, they, people? They, uh, and they told me to leave it outside. Please and I said, you know, oh, right. what, what kind of society is it? A man <laughs> can't walk in the street <laughs> with a, flame with a harmless flamethrower. Burn me if it makes you happy. See if I care. 
You're this, never going to agree. I remember, I remember when we wrote this speech as well. This was another one that we've been You're kicking this around for months. This was actually this was the last rewrite. This was the last rewrite, and we did it. That's why. Do you know what I find? You and me. I still find it quite hard to watch this bit now because it's like because of the pain of writing it. Really I remember we kept writing it, and then we would each take it in turns to stand on the little stage in the rehearsal room and declaim it to each other. But it's quite a hard thing. How does a man reconcile? How does a man reconcile the forces of good and evil? Well, how we do it is we go back to William Blake's Marriage of Heaven and Hell, which is where these lines are freely adapted from. Energy is pure delight, because he, his whole thing is about if a god has created a lamb and a lion, then he must have purposes for them, irrespective of their different energies. And I think that's the, that's the only useful message you could distill from the useless way that Jerry Springer himself always refuses to comment at the end of any of the shows. And then the lyrics of this whole section are from Blake's Marriage of Heaven and Hell, Everything That Lives is Holy. And I can't understand why people got so upset about it. It seems to me that there's a, this is a very positive message yeah, of, like, don't judge and tolerance. Well, it's based, no, it's very simple. It's, also, it's based on a Christian, judge not lest ye be judged. Yeah. But um, we were trying also, we were trying to write a comedy. <laughs> yeah. But the good thing about, you know, I mean, it always left me feeling really happy. Also, you say we're cops. trying to write a copy, but that, they're angels with cocks and yeah. tits. That yeah. is funny. That is very so funny. in the middle of a thing from William Blake... But angels are supposed to be androgynous, aren't they? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Fish. I'm kind of... Are we on shaky with We're on there? shaky. I don't think... Thin ice I don't there, think you'll find, thin ice? I don't think you'll oh. find a representation of angels in Christian art where they've got tits and cocks. Well, we have here. This is Christian yes. art. OK, fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, found it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're great, aren't they, those angels? I yeah, and when he first got those in, I remember just <laughs> feeling so <laughs> happy. Because, you know, basically, he's you write weird, something... Though, isn't he? he thought uh, of that. <laughs> this is another one of Jerry of uh, Jenny Arnold's fabulous oh, dances. Okay. These are ostrich feathers. They're very expensive. If the show had toured, we were going to have to have less of these to save money. But it won't be touring now, anyway, due to Christian voice. Can they use voice. the ones that we, uh... That, uh... What happens to these ones? Where are the, um... Um, they're in my house. Are oh, they in your house? Yeah. <laughs> I sleep on them. We wonder where they got some. I wonder where they got some. I've changed since I became a West End theatre director. I will now sleep on orange ostrich feathers. Yeah. That's not... I find I can't sleep on sheets anymore. I find them very uncomfortable. It's hard to know what to do here. All the Jerry's... That everyone that's played Jerry has had their own way of filling this gap where you're in a thing. I think David did very well. Yeah. yeah. Actually, if we'd have gone on tour, I would have tweaked this in a way or added to it so that it would have become like, you know, the insanity of Rapture? So where you yeah. always become delirious. So you'd um, I'd have uh, probably pre-recorded it, tweaked the voices, so it literally becomes almost kind of... You know um, when people are so in rapture, it's, it's almost it's, it's horrible to look on, almost? Yeah. I think that would have been the way... So this is like an introduction. Oh, oh, I, was well. very, I was very pleased with this bit. Do you remember how you used to fly the jacket down on a... I used to fly the jacket down on a... I used to fly the jacket down like on that. a coat hanger. I used and then to like one that. day, right, the thing broke in the rehearsal, thought, and um, thought, I don't the baby Jane just bought it on, and it seemed so much better. Oh, like yeah. the idea is, you know, he's being he's being sent back to the real world yeah. against his will. I quite liked it coming down, I have to say. I, I, I think I think that her the, handing it to him has a real kind of humanity about it. That's better. I think um, when it. it for me, the day when it stopped being thrown down was when the whole show was ruined. You felt it was it a direct result. And the day after that happened was when um, Christian Voice started um, protesting. So you feel if the... If I think a... that you played into the Christian Voice's hands what, by... If the, co if the thing had come in on a coat hanger, yeah. it would all have been better. It altered the whole kind of harmony and the whole, you know... Mm. You played into their hands. I tried to stop you. Look at these brilliant Julian Crouch figures again. Uh... He's working with Neil Gaiman. Jerry Gaming, Lazon, by the way, means uh, um, Jerry have mercy. Jerry have mercy. Again, I expect some people thought this was sacrilegious, but I find it quite beautiful. That was good. So, for anyone who hasn't understood, right, the second half is a dream happening in Jerry's mind. Oh, look, he's going back to normal. The moment though. when he's shot and waking up 
so it, there, so all the complaints as well about misrepresentation of religious figures, the gloss on it is that um, there's an element of egomania in Jerry's mind, wanting to wanting to uh, achieve something in his life, which would be making heaven and hell friends. Solving the irre irreconcilable. I think this is beautiful music. It's really great. You shot me in the chest. And there's a really good gag coming up as well. Why would you shoot me in the chest? All actors want a death scene, don't they? Yeah. Accidentally shot by a man in a diaper trying to kill a member of the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> not exactly the epitaph I was hoping for. That's not the gag. Very gag coming up. Still, it might look good in Latin. That's not the gag either. Who will speak for us? These big, this is. What do you mean? When you are gone. Oh, you got lots of people out there. Yeah. You got Oprah Winfrey. She's too tame. Sally Jesse Raphael. She's too old. Dr. Phil. He's too shit. The bet, but this now this is Ricky Lake. The pause here. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Credit where credit's due. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Right. You could have held it. Uh, if you don't mind, I think I'll try to get to a hospital. And now the final speech comes off to this, which is another thing we laboured over for about six months. Every and it ended up every waking minute. A kind of every cobbled waking. together thing. It's kind of things that Jerry Springer himself would say, stuff caught from poetry, and some things that we Firstly, believe. I'd like to add my name to the list of celebrities calling for tighter gun control. <laughs> <laughs> he did it really funny. Yeah. <laughs> Secondly, it's been a hell of a day. I've learned that there are no absolutes of good and evil. Jerry, actually, Jerry, the real Jerry, yeah, profoundly, very... profoundly disagrees with us on this yeah. point. In fact, he, more than any, I he mean... He was really angry about that, yeah. right? And, you know, but, he, but he feels on some level that he's a, a vo the voice of God on Earth. <laughs> no, he explained to me. Did he? Yeah. What? Well, the, I'll, 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 on my website, there's the interview with him, and you can see what he said. And for better or for worse... History defines us by what we do and what we choose not to do. Hopefully, what will survive of us is love. I copied that from um, a Philip so Larkin poem where it's, it's always used wrongly out of context to mean that what will survive of us is love, and he doesn't actually mean that. What he means is what will survive of us is the notion of love or man's belief in love, but perhaps not love itself. It's from an Arundel tomb. Wow, nice. And Nick Heitner picked me up on it and assumed that I'd used it wrongly. What did he use it? He used it wrongly on purpose. Oh, well. So, you know, but it was good of him to... Uh, what what, yeah, well, what Jerry... I'm now what you mean by that. Well, what Jerry said about that, um, about uh, when, he, when he said... He said, oh, I thought it was, when you when you came out of the line, I thought, wow, that's amazingly sentimental for Stuart. Yeah. I should, but was it? I'm no, not confused not, what it's it's not, what it means. It describes um, a statue of two people that, yeah. are, that are on a tomb and they're holding hands. Yeah. And um, of course, we, we what, what he's saying is we don't know that they may have had a terrible life. They may have been at each other's throats all the time. Right. The way they've chosen to be remembered uh, is in an image of, of loving repose. <laughs> no, that line about absolutes of good and evil, Jerry said that he accused me of being... Uh, a fascist for, for that. He said, Well, he's, it was the nothing is wrong, nothing is right line. He didn't yeah. like that. But, yeah. um, but well, I, I remember when I had this discussion. I said, You've got to remember, the guy is, he's been held over a furnace, been yeah. threatened with barbed wire shut over the ass for all eternity. Yeah. Put it in the context. Um, he's trying to do an impossible thing. He's there's, in character. A, that's right. It says, you know, he's in character. I mean, that's the, th the, the, the uh, thing is, a lot of complaints about it as well seem to confuse what the characters are saying with what we think, mm. and it's not the same thing. It's like holding someone accountable for mass you, you murder. You get more of that anyway, because you go out more. <laughs> I go out more, yeah. So I get more of abuse. <laughs> I get in emails at the moment, you know, from people saying, 
we apologize for all the Christians complaining about the, the show. Nice. We're Christians, don't worry, we're praying for you. Uh, I email them back and I go, can you just stop doing that? It's oh, a bit frightening, the idea of being prayed for. Oh, I like it. Tell well, I'll tell them to pray, pray for you. Pray for me, yeah. yeah. <laughs> tell them I'm happy for prayers. This bit always used to make me cry, and by the end, it didn't. Because he was so sick of it. I'd seen it 350 <laughs> times. You knew it was, but you I knew still it was coming think next. it's great. Now, another interesting thing is, now, right, you see, when he walks up the stairs here, when I met Jerry Springer, he said to me... He said, I wouldn't walk up the stairs No, he like said that. to me, what yeah. happens to me at the end when I'm walking up the stairs? Am I going to heaven or am I going to hell? And I said, well, we used to have God and the devil either side. And in the end, we pulled them out because it seemed like it was too meaningful and I preferred to leave it so you didn't really know where he'd gone, whether he'd been redeemed or damned or just whatever. Oh, I think, I think it's just he's moving on, isn't I know, it? But it's strange well. because what Jerry Springer seems to be saying... It's like he was asking me what we thought would happen to him, whether he would go to heaven or hell. And I think that's why he freaked out a bit when he saw it in London, because I think this this kind of what might have made him think about what his own life would add up to. It must be very strange watching a theatrical representation of yourself he does it killed. Very, uh, he does it. <laughs> and David Soul He's chooses to give nothing away there. The way uh, you know, it doesn't good. the face. It doesn't tell yeah, you anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clap, 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 clapping, 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 clapping. What do you think of this clapping? Um. Oh, yeah, we cut that. All right. Oh, they cut out the curtain call. Yeah. So normally what used to happen was there'd be a big curtain call so they could all dress up as this. Yeah. And then they would. Stuart doesn't like uh, this and he's probably going to go on at length. I came round to it, but I, w- uh, I would still rather have ended the show on Jerry standing on the stairs yeah. there because I feel like. Yeah, let's not go into all that. Well, you can right, if you okay. want. Well, well I felt like it leaves me an element of doubt, uh, whereas this feels yeah. like a sop to a West End audience's idea of what a show should be. In fact, I'm glad the show's never going to be performed again due to Christian voice. Because <laughs> <laughs> I hate this bit. See, there's the stairs. John Fode, our producer, he's obsessed with stairs. They're good stairs, though. They are good. This great, basically, this whole section was worked out between Richard, Martin Lowe, the original musical director, and Jenny Arnold, the choreographer. And it had to be all coordinated about how long it would take people to get changed and coming down the steps and everything. I used to enjoy watching it from the side, off stage, because the steps up to the back of those steps were really steep. <laughs> it was a real struggle for people to get up. What I like about it, though, I think, is, um, I mean, I know it's you fun. hate... Uh, no, I like it's it. funny, but it's just... Uh, when you're there live, it just seems like... It, it, it looks like there's about 40 or 50 of them. Yeah. Oh, that's I mean, what, I, what I like about it is it ends up with everyone looking the same, and that seems to yeah, me yeah. to be quite a radical thing to do in a, in a genre that's very much based around stars and individuals. To, like, they look like a company, and I like that about them. Well, well, that's it. I hope you, uh, if you listen to all this, I hope you found it interesting. I think we had a bit of a dip. Um, we well, you'd I... have a dip, wouldn't you, if you'd worked on something for four yeah. and a half years and you'd just been told you can't do anything with yeah, it and you're true. never going to get paid. So I think, you know, I think we did the first... I think the, the commentary, right? I mean, I might be wrong. When I listen back to it, I think the first half commentary was really good. The second half, I feel we were a little muted, but also we did have a big lunch which I think slowed us down a bit. <laughs> I know you don't see that as a factor, but I really think that is. And it's, you know... Oh. Can I just say well, about this bit here? When I saw, when I was a teenager, I saw um, uh, Richard Eyre's production of Guys and Dolls at the National, and it was the best thing I ever, 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 ever saw. And I queued up overnight with my sister, and there's this great bit. And this is called, um, I think it's called a shush chorus or something. And they all, they did this little, and I just said I wanted something like this in it at some point. And it was an amazing moment. When I was four, yeah. I saw Jimmy Tarbuck and the Irish singing group The Bachelors yeah. in a version of Jack in the Beanstalk in a theatre yeah. in Birmingham. Yeah. And what happened? Why didn't you have a beanstalk in the show? Well, I wanted one. Well, you never said that. I would have been very happy for a beanstalk. <laughs> well, maybe you it can be in the next thing we do. You deliberately jeopardised the whole show. Do you I know, know what? where the beanstalk would have gone? You know? Can I just say I blame you more than I blame Christian Voice? You think if there'd been a beanstalk in it, Christian Voice would have liked it? Yeah. I'm saying exactly what, that. A beanstalk and a coat hanger would have yeah. made all the difference. I'm, I'm saying exactly those two things now. 
Well, it's not my fault. I didn't know it's it was going to happen. It's all, all those three things are your fault. Oh. <laughs> Mind you, I don't mean that. Jack and the Beanstalk still touring, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, like... You know. <laughs> That's been popular for hundreds of years now. You don't see them getting that off. Oh, I feel quite moved by the whole experience. Line producer. You know what? Okay. Say what you like about everything, but I had the time of my life working on that. Thanks for getting me on involved. Stuart, it was a pleasure. It was a leisure. It was hard to imagine that it ever happened. It didn't. Didn't it? No. What, have I just been watching then? It's not been a dream. <laughs> what? It's been a dream. What, where am I? Ah, Wake ah, up! Ah, oh. ah. Ah.